Good afternoon, good morning, you lovely lot. Welcome to Craft Along. This is your mid-show of the day of this Tuesday. I hope you are well. How lovely was it this morning? Well, it was for me because I had maybe just like an extra half hour lie in bed. I then got sorted, I got myself ready. I had Lily and I had Debbie on. I was watching away. I was actually watching going, please don't sell out, please don't sell out because I want to be here later on today when we're going to be featuring a brand new item. It has already been uh, featured earlier on and wake up call I'm saying no more because I want there to still be stock later on however this is of course it's all about the craft along we gave you a little bit of a tease the royal we with Lily and Debbie earlier on on wake up call as to what the craft along's all going to be about but she was here for wake up call she's here for craft along and she's here again later on with me for lunch party my good friend my gorgeous friend it's Debbie Debbie's back how are you doing, Debbie? Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward. I love craft alongs. It's I good, really isn't like it? I really enjoy the start to finish process. I'm gonna say start to finish process in the loosest of terms this, yeah. start, this time because <laughs> it might be that we this might be the one that just gets me uh, a little bit, but timing wise, I've tried. I always try. I'm like yes. you, Greg. I sit there and try it and time see how it. it will work. Um so I'm gonna show you how because the, the thing that I got asked when I when people found out that I was doing the macro um, floral yeah. um, craft along. I got asked about this particular bag that our lovely Marie mm -hmm. designed. Um, and our Marie Jones, if she's watching, big love to you because I love the girl, I love the lady bits. I know her personally very well. But um, she made this gorgeous bag um, for of our samples. Mm -hmm. And so I got asked, would there be any way on the craft along that we could recreate this? And um, wow. we're going to do. We are going to do. So we're going to use, now I've used the rose in this particular design. I know we haven't got the rose, but if you got the originals, and we always say, mm -hmm. when you are at the launch, if you're buying the sets, you're going to get this craft along yeah. in a few weeks' time. So you might have already got this. You can use this one. However, all of those designs will fit this particular product um, and some. So we're going to do all the start to finish from the terms of, we'll do some colouring, uh, with colouring mediums, and, and a mixture of colored mm -hmm. mediums actually uh, we're going to do the bag template as well we're going to show you how to put that all together and fingers crossed if it all goes right fingers crossed yes uh, we'll get it all put together for you uh, but i will make sure that you've got absolutely every every little bit of knowledge you need to be able to get this craft along started okay Ah, uh, brilliant. And this is the one show when I'm on this side that I am quite quiet throughout the steps of, uh, in today's case, being Debbie, because we want to make sure that you can uh, craft along, because that's what it's all about. So what we have got is the list for you. So if you want to be crafting along and making exactly as Debbie is going to be making, you're going to use your Gemini Regal Rose 3D embossing folder. You're going to use your aqua pens what are reactive ink pads, lemon tonic and honey pot? You're going to use your Gemini Mini with Love Dye. You know, Debbie loves that one. Magnificent Butterfly Dye Set. Multi-purpose card stock. We've got watercolour card and matte black card. You're also going to need a few additional items. So that's going to be then your large Gemini. You're going to need your Scoremaster scoreboard. You're going to need your guillotine. You're going to need your all-purpose glue. You're going to need your tacky glue with a little fine applicator tip, red liner tape, dew drops, and some ribbon as well. So that's what you're going to need if you are wanting to craft along and create exactly what Debbie's doing. Of course, as we've said in the past, you might change it slightly. You might not have the exact folder that Debbie's got, so you'll use something else. It's up to you, but at least you've got the list as to what Debbie is going to be making. First and foremost, before we go over the actual deal that we've got, a couple of things I want to say is you might find Facebook is dropping out every now and again. Fingers crossed, I think we're okay at the moment, but if it does drop out, what I would suggest even if it's fine at the moment. The best place is always to watch, and I know so many of you prefer to actually watch across on our YouTube. So just go on our YouTube, just search Crafters TV if you've not already added it as a favourite, you'll find us there. The other option always is on our website, so crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. I say that's also another good option because you can watch and shop at the exact same time. Watching and shopping means you've also got the opportunity to have a look at our 12 days of Craftmas. So today Day is all about I'm not going to say a little section on the website uh, we have got an abundance of items that are up 
to 50% off. Guess what's in there, guys? The 2022 Advent Calendar. Now, I know you're not necessarily going to get it in time to then follow along all of the videos and lives I'm doing, but go to the website, click on the bobble that says up to 50% off selected items. It does end midnight, wherever you are across the globe. And look at that, straight at the top, Advent Calendar. We've got some ribbons, we've got some cards, we've got craft boxes, we've got some stamens, we've got some dies, we've got some stamps, we've got creator cards, we've got edibles, we've got folders with stencils, we've got faux fabric, we've got papers, we've got slim lines, we've got so many items in that that is up to 50% off. I cannot believe that on day six, we've still got that remaining stock of our advent calendar. Now, the reason I'm really, really shouting about that even though we're already into December. As you know, each day that I do, uh, predominantly alive, some of them are videos. They are stored on my Facebook and across on my YouTube, Crafters Companion YouTube. So you can go back, even in next month, the month after, the month after, next year, you can go back and you can still follow along with the videos and lives, even though I'm not live. So you can get that now. Maybe you're just going to open it all. Maybe you are just going to, maybe you're going to do it throughout January. You know, you can do it any month doesn't matter but that as well as so many items are up to 50% off and you still get your club inspire on top of that which is ridiculous and I keep saying ridiculous but it's good for all of you at home of course so craft along if you never got the main bundle that first launched when it comes to these folders within our birthday event what we do have is what we have got left. Now, the original collection was like a four pack. We do only have three of them left. So what we've done is we've bundled them together and we've popped in some aqua pens. Now, I'm gonna reiterate that again. This of what we've got for today's stock is all that we've got left. Once they've gone, they've gone. So today's deal when it comes to these is the 3D macro folders, Boston folders. You're going to get three of them and they're also going to come with 12 of your aqua pens. So today's price being £26 or $35. Keeping in mind these just launched, uh, well just the other month during birthday event, £14.96 saving or $21.84 saving. But of course, platinum then comes down to £20.80 or $28 for round about a five and a half by five and a half incredible depth 3D embossing folder with your aqua pens. So let's have a look of these ones here. Now, you know, Debbie explained these within Wake Up Call when I was watching them absolutely perfectly. It's like that lens as well is right close up when it comes to that floral. The attention of detail, the attention of depth, whether it's the outside edge, the inside edge, the stamens, incredible. Pop these ones through with a little bit of ink. What I have done, and it looks phenomenal, is take your Be Beautiful collection, die cut a little bumblebee and just sit it on top. Done. Finished. But in today's deal, you're also getting your primary aqua pens. These are worth £22.99 or $32. But look at the price. Look at the price today. Today's price, £26 or $35. But platinum for your 12 aqua pens. Remember, aqua, water-based, you can get abundance of shades and you can create your own colours. Plus, you're getting your heavenly, you're getting your lovely, and you're also getting your pretty as well. Peony, Lily, all of these. So these ones are your three plus your 12 pens. That is today's deal. So you will be able to get hold of these today and use any of them afterwards. Follow along with Debbie's Craft Along. Like all of our shows, they're there on our YouTube. So you can go back. Okay, the show won't be live, but it means you can pause Debbie, you can rewind Debbie, you can go over additional bits if you so want. So that's today's deal when it comes to our 3D macro folder. Oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it, Johnny. I don't, oh, my, my, my arm's twisted. My arm's twisted. Oh, my gosh. What an incredible wake-up call this morning with Lily and Debbie about our brand new, not only our brand new heat gun, which I was beyond excited about. You've no idea how long I've wanted our own heat tool. We all have two speeds, perfect for multitude of crafting and a multitude of ways to use it. But this... 
This is the phenomenal item for me. This is your heat and mould blocks. Now, you've got four of these. Now, don't think, oh, Craig, I'm going to have to buy loads and loads and loads. To be honest, you don't. Although you probably will, because what you're going to do is you're going to heat it up, you're going to press it into any surface you want, and it then becomes a stamp. So it could be paper clips, it could be keys. Think of the swash book that Debbie showed earlier on. We'll have a look again later on in launch party. Whatever surface, press it in, that then becomes a stamp, a folder, whichever way you want to think of it. Think about your die cut sentiments. Cut a few, layer them on top, heat your foam, press it on, now it becomes a stamp. Incredible. And do you know what? Reheat it again, goes back flat, use it time and time again. So that is what's coming up in launch party. If, and I am going to say, if any stock remains, doesn't officially launch until launch party, you guys found, you guys found it last night, then this morning it was so, so busy. So this one here, 30% of all the stock that we've got, got has gone already. I'm not surprised, but that is one you need to check out. Check out quick when it comes to your basket. And of course, brand new, you still get your Club Inspire, of course. That, as you can see, I better tell you the price, actually. $29.98 or $36.90. I'm that excited. Do you know something? I didn't even need to know the price either. I know you're like that. You're like, Craig, I need it. I want it. I have to have it. But platinum, $23.98 or $29.52. But we are going to have a look at our craft along. We do have a very, very special guest. We've got Stacey from Las Vegas is here crafting along with us. Good morning. It'll be morning, won't it, Stacey? It's early in the morning. Early in the morning. <laughs> How early? Uh, right now it's 6.11. <gasps> oh, wow. Wow. That yes. really is very, very early. Um, have you got up early especially to do this craft along? Or are you an early bird riser anyway? I'm not an early bird. Oh, you're not? <laughs> so you've got up, up. Just for this. But as soon as it's done, I'm out the door to work. So it's perfect mm -hmm. timing. Oh. That are oh, even perfect. Well, thank you so much for getting up really, really early just for us. We really, really do appreciate it. Do you my have... pleasure. Sorry, Stacey. Oh. I just said my pleasure. Oh, bless you. Have you got everything that you need to be crafting along? I do. I have a couple substitutions, but I'm ready. Perfect. Excellent. Well, if you need any additional help or that, just uh, give the camera a wave and we'll come back to you. And every now and again throughout the show, we'll drop back and see however you're getting on. But so lovely to see you, Stacey, and we'll see you shortly. Thank you. Right, here we have got Rachel on the comments for now. And it is Rachel said, because she said hello to us and we said hi back to her. And uh, she actually said that uh, it certainly feels like December. It is very, very cold out here in the Northeast. It absolutely is. Although, do you know something? Yesterday, I had my really, really thick jumper on. And you know what I was like? I was on this side and then I was flying across to America with Sarah. Then it was back here. I was roasting. So today, I put my Buddy the Elf slightly thick thinner jumper on and you know what happens uber cold and apparently i look like buddy the elf can i just say for anyone here in the uk you know that asda is using buddy for their christmas promotion i like to point out i had this even like last year so i had it well before this elf film explosion happened again just want to point that one out but yeah but it is it's nice and cozy at the moment in here uh, we have also got uh, actually rachel saying love the elf uh, the 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 elephant the elephant the elephant love the elephant the elf out to it we've got jay ellen saying morgan is saying good morning everyone pammy is saying hi debbie craig and crew from central new york have to be quick as i'm in the hospital again only have a few minutes well, I hope you're well. I hope everything is OK. Nothing's too serious. But thank you for watching anyway, whether you're at home or, of course, if you are out and about. Mary Beth's on. Lorna's on. Christine's on. Christine Mahoney is saying, hi there. Wish I was on the craft along with you, Debbie Robinson and Craig. It looks fun. Uh, get well soon, Christine. I know you were watching on my live last night for the Advent calendar. You've also been feeling under the weather. So for anyone that's unwell, send in love and best wishes. Lorna's saying, been loving your lives, Craig. Thank you very much. Thea saying, I want to make the bag for Christmas. We'll save the show. Perfect. Val is in saying, we'll be taking notes. And Linda is saying, good morning. I have this foam already. You guys, America, I know. I know what you're like. Not used it yet, but we'll give it a try. So, any other questions of that, send them across, and then we will then uh, answer them. Right, you.
heat gun we just showed you a moment ago that's coming up in launch party but what we do have is some pigment ink pads these ones are opaque pigment ink pads five piece you buy four you get one free you do indeed 23.96 35 dollars 80 platinum price comes down to 19.17 or 28 dollars 64. now we have got limited stock within our four pack Gildan waxes. So this one here is your collection, $35.97 or $50.97. Look at that saving on Gildan waxes. We sell day in, day out, but you've got that deal today. $28.78 or $40.78 for all four of the Gildan waxes. Isn't that a phenomenal one? That would work well with any of your folders, 3D, macrofloral, it's entirely up to you. Of course, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com and .eu for anything for you guys, Central Europe, you know where you need to go as well. Uh, that's where you need to go. So this is it. This is all about the craft along. This is when I go quiet every now and again, and then you'll just hear me pop up with any additional questions that you may be asking to Debbie. Uh, right, Debbie, my lovely, it's over to you. Right, lovely. So first thing we're going to take is some watercolour cardstock. Um, if you don't have any, um, multi-purpose cardstock will do. Um, you'll just get more better results because I'm going to be using the aqua markers and some water reactive ink pads so you get a better result in terms of a colouring finish so but if you haven't got it don't worry because multi-purpose cardstock is absolutely fine for that but what we're going to do is first of all now I'm going to just explain that um, this bag is a full bag as in decoration wise in terms of it's got a back panel and it's got a front panel and I say a front panel it's actually got a full front panel oh. so the full oh. front panel is just underneath so it's not any trickery or anything it's a like that Eyes, isn't yeah, because it? it's just to play on the eyes and you think that you've cut into it, but you haven't because you're actually just using it. So you are going to do this three times if you were going for that full effect. Okay. Now, if you're going for the full effect, you will need to do this three, uh, you will need to emboss it three times or put yeah. it in three times. And you can take your tag out of there. So that's got like a little gift tag on. Well. You can take your tag out of there as well, as well as that top panel piece. So... What I'll do is first, I'll cut a couple okay. and then we'll see how we go on time-wise and things like that because we do want to get that bag template done as yes. well. But we're going to focus on this 3D embossing folder first. Okay, so for that, now these are five and a half by five and a half. However, and I did tell, I was talking to Lily earlier on this morning, Craig, I don't know if you do the same, but I take it down a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go in at five and a quarter by five and a quarter inch square. So I've gone five and a quarter on top of my guillotine. So uh, this will work on your small one as well as your large one so I've just got the large one because it's the one that I personally use um, most um, but again just a five and a half sorry a five and a quarter inch square yeah and you're going to need that two or three times depending on um, how many times you want to put that panel on you might want to keep your gift bag uh, you might want to keep it plain on the back. True. So you might not want to pop it onto the back. Uh, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to. Um, that's just a personal choice. So if you are going to go in, though, you will need to, to cut this three times with some watercolour cardstock. So, right. Because I am going to do, hopefully, <laughs> achieve all three, uh, I am going to cut myself three to start with. Brilliant. So that's just five and a quarter inch squares times three. Okay, so I'll just move those out of the way. Let's push that down there. Um, not going to be needing guillotine for a while, so I'm just going to push that to one side as well. Good up. Um, and then I don't need to do anything else apart from emboss. So we've got us three pieces, and because it's what's called cardstock on both sides, you're not going to worry about which is your emboss side, which no. is your deboss side. Uh, but if you ever do get struggle, you feel for the raised element. On this occasion, we actually pop the Gemini on the back, so you know that that's the embossed... Uh, yeah. If you were doing it onto some coloured cardstock. So what we're going to do is we're going to emboss all three pieces of these, uh, and I'm going to pop that in there, and then we're going to use our Gemini, and it is a platform of a clear cutting plate with your cardstock inside. You've got your magnetic shim on and your uh, plastic shim and run that through. And you're going to do that on all three pieces. OK. Because then we're going to colour it in. Can I just ask, David, just in case anyone's wondering, because yeah. I do the same as you, you might be like, well, if it's five and a half, why are you doing five and a quarter instead of five and a half? So I personally, I like... A, that, that is a good question. 
That is the full folder, but the actual design is five yeah. and a quarter inside because there's just that little bit in in inner. It's like what the edge, it? isn't it? In a, in, in a frame, in a frame. Um, so I don't have to trim it down. No. If you don't feel comfortable in doing that, in case it moves or anything like that, of course, do your five and a half, and then you can trim it trim down it. afterwards. Yeah. But for the measurements of the bag. Which is why I've told, like, why, why I was saying five and a quarter, um, that will fit onto there perfectly. Perfect. So that's why. So again, we're just going to repeat that three times. So again, let's pop that in, and you can place it. You can actually see when you've got your cardstock down that little bit of that framing. So again, let's just run that through, and again, 3D requires a different combination on your Gemini. I'm not sure what it is for the other machines because I don't know about you, Craig, but I don't use any mm -hmm. other machine. I no. haven't done for nope. about six something years um so i've no idea if they go through any of the other well they do go through other ones yes. of course they do but i don't know the combination, Not the combination no yeah so again you've got that lovely embossed detail and it's going to come to life look in a moment when that. we add it's just look at that look look at that it just shows you that dimension it's almost like looking on the top of a rose it just is beautiful. It's exactly what it Absolutely is. Absolutely gorgeous. Because I'm because I'm doing all that. Let's get let's get all three done. Go, go and do them all. I remember, if you don't mind me saying, Debbie, just now. I remember a uh, June birthday event when I was on with Leanne, and I was speaking to her about it, and I was saying, where, how, how would anyone think about doing this in a folder? Who on the team was it that thought about yes, that idea? Yep. And I, I believe, I'm going to double check, I'm 100% sure uh, Leanne said it was Ruth next door in the office. She had this idea of really, really closed up. And Leanne had said herself, I don't think that'll work. I don't think it'll work because you need to be so, so close to then transition that into a multi-layer folder. I but got Ruth and it, some of the other team, they made it work. It works and some. Uh, that, that zoomed in feature, like it you're is. almost in, on top of that middle center of the flower is just incredible. And I, I love them. And I know that Leanne has said that these have been her favorite today. Yes. So, and I can, you can understand why, can't you? So, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of those images now, and this is when you're going to choose your colouring medium. I've gone for um, some aqua pens. There's tricolour aquas out there, so you can do tricolours. Okay. Um, I've also got as well, um, I've chosen three of my favourite uh, colours, and I say three of my favourite <laughs> colours, that's just going to work with this particular design. So, I've gone with lemon tonic, honey pony. Honey pony, <laughs> honey, honey pony, honey, 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 honey pot, <laughs> and and orange water reactive, and then of course I've gone for the colours actually, Craig. That are, and this is a fluke. Um, are the colours that, really? Honestly, this is a proper fluke. This this is the colours of um, the aqua pens that come that in that in the new bundle. deal. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely awesome. crazy. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I will take a few of those um, out. So, again, I think it's just going to be a, your own particular choice. And I did say that. These are not optional features, but I think colouring-wise can be anything you want to do. Good, so, yeah. I've got yellow, gold, orange in terms of the, tri uh, sorry, the aquas, and I've got the aqua marine as well to create a little bit of an outside frame there. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we're going to do a spot of colouring. Okay. Um, I've got... Um, I've got one of our Spectrum Noir brushes. Do you know the Spectrum Noir mm -hmm. water frame brushes? I think it's a Spectrum Noir, or is it our war? Yeah, I know they're from Crafters Companion because yeah. they've got different size brush nibs. I know we did do Spectrum Noir ones, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, but then yeah. we do our own ones. You can now, also but... use like paint brushes as well, Craig. So you've got again choices. If you're going to use paint brushes, you're going to need some water, and you're also going to need some tissue, which I've got abundance of down here. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to do a little bit of spot of colouring. You can also as well, if you want to add a little bit of uh, sparkle, um, we've got a water brush mm -hmm. in terms of our clear overlay Good sparkle thinking. brush because that's got your water content in there but with that lovely fine my literally micro fine glitter yeah, that's is, in there it? that creates that lovely uh, wash as well so you've got choices uh, but i'm going to now use and our aqua pens they come in your form of your brush nib and also the very very fine tip applicator as well now you can go directly on color with if you want to but i prefer to build up color so i'm going to use my glass mat as a palette i'm going to scribble quite a bit down I can come back to this all the time um, and i'm going to pick up and we're going to start to literally play and just pick out and color that image in okay. the lovely thing about this is is that there's no right or wrong way craig no right or wrong way you can just go straight in we can lay down and do petals at a time. Right. And 
again, I, I don't know about, do you do petals at a time when you're doing yours, Craig? All, all colour and certainly, so if you, you know, you're asking about flowers, so petals, yeah, I do one at a time. Kind of goes for really anything, Debbie, whatever yeah. it is, I'll do a section at a time. Yes. Or yes, a petal at a time. I do yeah. exactly that. Yeah. I mean, you can take it straight on and go straight on and colour and add that little bit and then and then move it. It's entirely up to you. You'll get a different look each and every single time. And with the water brush as well, constant water running through that brush, so you will get a, a very a nice water you down. Will, you? If you're going in with a uh, brush, so I've got a pot of water at the side of me, um, Craig, so I've okay. got a pot of water. I've got myself a little brush, uh, but you want, you want a clean brush. You don't want a mucky one like Debbie's got. Let me just clean that up. There we go. Uh, you want a damp brush because you want to be able to manoeuvre that around as well. So again, let's just go on. I'll put lots of colour down and we're just going to keep on picking up and colouring. I was I so bad. I do that as well, Debbie. As I'm using my water brush with inks or anything like that. I'll put them in the water tub and forget about them. I can't yeah. use them again. I'm like, oh, I've not cleaned them. No, I know. I'm terrible for it, Craig. I am absolutely terrible for it. I literally forget about cleaning the brushes. Yeah. It's terrible. I just put it because I use it and then I think, oh, I'll, I'll clean it next time I come to use it. Uh, and then I never do. Never do. Nope. So, yeah, so this is all about doing a spot of colouring and just enjoying the process with this. But I am deliberately going to go in and just lay down the first part of the colour. We can build up colour. And that's the in. thing, the good thing with having these aqua pens in the bundle is exactly as you said, you can build the colour yeah. with ease. This is looking good already, and even just starting it. Right, I've just had a question coming yes. from our Charlotte. So for anybody who missed out the plate combination for the 3D macro folder embossing folders, um, I'll just repeat that just for a second. OK. So you're going to pop your clear cutting plate, put your folder with your cardstock um, in the centre of there, then the magnetic shim and then the clear, not clear, the frosty, Sarah calls it frosty, yeah. I call it the plastic shim. I, yeah, I'm the same um, plastic. And plastic shim over the top. And that's the combination you will use for the 3D embossing folder. Excellent. And that's just for those people that may have just missed that little bit. Yes. Yeah. Um, there was also, let me see where it was. So Rhonda's saying, oh, so can I use this in the MIDI? Yes. You could. Now, if you're going in with the MIDI, you don't need anything. You don't, do you? You don't take anything to it. You just run your embossing folder through your MIDI. Uh, and it's that simple. It literally is as easy peasy as that. It's probably one of the most easiest combinations ever uh, to create um, uh, your 3D embossing. So again, all I'm doing, lay, lay, I'm just laying down that first initial colour. We'll start to build it all up, because at the moment it's all, I'll say not patchy, because that's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. I know exactly what yeah, you mean. Yeah, so because, th because it is, it's the first layer of colour. You could, of course, take your um, water reactives and you could go straight over if you wanted to do a very quick, um, fast true. version, and you yeah. just go over. A bit similar to what I did this morning with my first demonstration uh, using the macros. You could absolutely do... I keep calling them macros. Stop calling them macros, Debbie. That's the size of the... Uh... At least it's not as bad as what I called them. What did you call them? Oh, I don't, no, I don't want to say it again, because I'll end up saying it later oh. on. <laughs> it's a restaurant chain. A restaurant chain? And it's a, well, I, I made the mistake and called them a macro polo. You didn't? I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as soon as I said it once, I could not get that out of my head. And I had them on one day, just one segment, um, and then I knew I had a full show coming up with Leanne. And oh, I was no. like, and it was, it was Johnny and Charlotte are in the gallery today. And afterwards, I said to Johnny, Oh my gosh, I can't say that in front of Leanne. I cannot say that in front of Leanne. I didn't, but I was sweating at the time. Oh, you do, though, don't you? <laughs> Working with the lady who created and designed it. it's like oh no yeah and you just and, and I know the team wouldn't think that but you feel yourself you're kind of disrespecting the oh, product God, by giving yeah, them another yeah. name you know but um, yeah thankfully some did see the the, the funny side of it. <laughs>
So, yeah, and the beautiful thing about using um, aqua pens as well, Craig, I don't know about you, is but can't you cover quite a lot? You can, yeah. I mean, really, when you think about how fast I'm putting that down, that's a lot of coverage. And I know, like, at the moment, you're thinking, well, it looks a little bit bitty. Um, don't worry, because it soon won't be. But, well, Debbie, yeah. you say that, but if this is the first time someone's doing what you're doing, yeah. that itself would be such a confidence booster, because that does look fab. Yeah. That looks really, really good. You've got a lot of like different light sources. Yes. So you know it would be a good way to start. Absolutely. And just make sure your brush, like I said, you you, you need a nice um, damp brush, not too wet. You don't want it to be saturated. But these are fabulous. I'm not going to lie. These water brushes that we do um, are absolutely fabulous. I, I I love ours. And rather than keep worrying about it, because I don't want to, I don't want to put my nib into something wet. So rather than worry, just wipe it up. There's no, you know, there's a tiny bit of ink I'm using. Mm -hmm. It's only a tiny bit. But again, let's go in and colour. Oh, oh. What, what was that? Um, Johnny just said to me there, we've got a stock update. And I thought he was a way to say something completely different. Um, guys, if you do want that advent calendar, you've got to be quick. That is, from our 12 days of Craftmas, you have to, just like Lily this morning, I have to be very careful how I say that, try and do that slowly. Uh, 12 days of Craftmas. That is the most busiest popular in that segment across on our website. So up to 50% off. It is the advent calendar. And boy, you guys are going for it. <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? That's, that's, how amazing is that? Right, Theo. Right, I'm just going to continue okay. to colour because I, I, I can hear we've got uh, some good questions coming in, haven't we? We do. We've actually got one from Stacey, so we're going to oh, lovely, check yeah. in uh, with Stacey because we're going to go all the way to Vegas. I believe Stacey's having a little bit of an issue when it comes to the plate configuration with the folder. Is that right, Stacey? I am, and I, I might have the wrong um, plate. So I have a purple plate as a cover and this one, and it is just not going through. So I tried my junior ones, and they didn't want to go through. Right. Right. So, yeah, I can see what... What's the covers? Debbie, do you want to answer that one? So, yes, yeah, Stacey, what you've got there are two clear cutting plates. So you only need one of them. So uh, either the purple or the clear one, um, just one. Okay. So, just you, so put one of them to one side, keep one. You should have okay. a magnetic shim. So have you got a magnetic shim? Is yours black or is it the... We do have a magnetic shim. Hold on yep. a second. I do. Here's my magnetic shim. Yep. So the magnetic shim will go over the top onto the folder. So you put... So you clear... Use your clear cutting plate as your, your main base. Um, grab your folder. Uh -huh. Put your folder, let me just make sure I've got mine there, onto the top with your cardstock in, and then your okay. magnetic shim. But this is the plastic one. So the plastic one is like a, a frosty coloured mm -hmm. looking plate. Um, yes. So that's the one that goes over to the top. And try that combination for me and see if that works for you. Okay, I have that one. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you for that one, Debbie. Right, Theo, let us know how you're getting on, Stacey, but that, I promise you that'll let be sorted now that Debbie's gone over that one with you for sure. Uh, just while we're just there, Linda is saying, when I use my folder, Debbie, it wrinkles the paper. Think at the side. Aha! Right, so there's a very, very, very quick tip that you could do there. Talk. So, instead of going in um, onto your plate, you're just going to have it slightly twisted. Slight twist. Mm -hmm. And, or at an angle, and that'll, re that'll prevent that from happening. Perfect. So when you go in straight, sometimes the pressure can just cause a slight little ripple. We don't want that, so you're just going to tilt it a little bit onto your plate platform. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for that one, Debbie. And just to say, Stacey's got that up and running. Perfect. Yay! Yay! Awesome. I know sometimes you just need that little bit of a guidance, don't you, with uh, the plate configuration and if you're new to it as well you know sometimes as well although and we say you tend to use the same plate configuration a lot with die cutting but every now and again you just change that configuration and sometimes you're just like what one was it again but at least we've got Stacey up and running which is brilliant 
absolutely so again all I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit more of the yellow I've actually again you could take one of your lemon tonic uh, and go in with the lemon tonic and you can see it's quite a similar color to that gold uh, sorry the yellow mm -hmm. but it's not quite but you can this is when you can add a little bit of shading underneath so I'm going to go underneath some of those um, petals and just layer down a little bit more uh, color so again let's go in um, and again choice of paint brushes whichever one it is that you want to use um, you can now it's dry and of course we do have a brand new tool today do we ah of course <gasps> We've got our tool. So we've got our heat tool that can help you dry in between the stages. So I'm just going to plug mine back in, Craig. So let's plug mine okay, back in. OK, yeah. And you can dry off. So that, do you know when I say about going back in with mm -hmm. your colour, you can dry this off. Yeah. So give that, and you've got two settings. You've got a slow setting and a fast setting. Perfect. Love that addition. Uh, and enables you then to be able to you know, dry in between the stages. And so that if you do want to go in with a bit more of a, a shade, you can go back in. And that means, can you see now that I can start to build you up? Can, I can, can still can, draw yeah. out, but I can keep doing that and keep repeating that until I'm happy with. So like round here on this bottom part of the petal to where the rose is, you'll pop this. This is where we talk about, you know, your light source and how you get and how you pick up that and how you get that shade and it literally is just can you Look see that yeah and again all i'm going to do is just carry on until i'm happy with this and this is bear in mind this is just one color mm -hmm. i've got the rest of the colors to add to it yet so you can already see it's starting to take shape um and add in those extra piece you know those extra shades that we're going to go for and i'm going to continue to do that again craig so fire away with anything is okay. everybody okay yeah we've got with... some uh comments and then I do want to go over those gilded waxes as well because I believe we've got just left than 20 left and then that's that deal gonna go but we've got Lillian on Facebook is saying Craig you are the only person I've ever seen who looks good in an elf jumper thank you <laughs> thank you it's, it's yeah yeah I'm getting a bit warm now even though it's a bit thinner Beth is saying I love these folders Lazar is saying even on the white, it looks stunning. And that's the thing with these folders, isn't it? The yeah. do Debbie, they yeah, look absolutely. absolutely stunning. Coletta is saying, I want to make some of the Marco folders, poinsettias, <laughs> for Christmas cards. <laughs> it's a good idea. They came with the original bundle when it, they first launched. That would look good. Regarding the water, Thea on YouTube is saying, don't drink it, Debbie. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, don't no, drink I the know. water. I have actually got, and the worst thing is, my actual cup of water is in the oh, same cup. Oh, it's the cup. same, Debbie. So I'm going to try and be careful. Because That's I brilliant. am notorious for doing that. I do I do, do that quite a lot. And yeah. I, I, you know, it's... it's, it's We've just, all done it. I'm thankful, thankfully, that you have, Craig, because I sometimes think, is it just me? Is it just me? I maybe don't do it as much as you do it, but yeah, I have done it. <laughs> I have done End it. of day, it's just a bit of water. It's That's not going to hurt you, is it? It's, not, it's really not going to hurt you. Yeah. Um, <coughs> just quickly as well, Rhonda's saying, what is today's gift? Well, today's oh. gift on the 12 Days of Craftmas is up to 50% off across on our website. There is a link, you're going to have a look at the bauble. It says 12 Days of Craftmas. You've got a little bauble that says up to 50% off. Click on that and you've got an abundance of items on that page of up to 50% off. We've already had two sell outs. That advent calendar is gone absolutely crazy. I think some of you as well, I I think as well, some that might think, uh, maybe I don't necessarily need the advent cal calendar for December. And this happens every year when I do videos or lives. What can happen is people are like, oh, I like what you've got in there. And now that you've got it on and up to 50% off, it has been so, so busy. So that is across on our website. Sorry, Craig. No. I'm, I'm, I'm literally I'm, I'm getting lost in the world of colouring. No. Uh, sorry. No, you, you carry on if there's anything you're wanting to explain, but that is looking phenomenal. It's just starting to build it up. That's all I'm doing. I'm literally just building up. And like I said, if it gets a little bit too much for you, where in terms of your, you've got bits of ink everywhere, just get a little wipe. It doesn't mm -hmm. hurt. It doesn't hurt. But again, you could as well, like I said, there's, there's plenty of other options that you can do to draw out colour. And what you'll add with this is, is you add that little bit of sparkle because this is a lovely little uh, brush there that you could use as well. And of course, in between your stages, blast your tool. So get your tool out. Yeah. And blast away. 
And would you, is that something you recommend, Abby, is oh, either yeah. heat set it or leave it to dry, but leave it to dry before you build the colour? Yes, before you build colour. Well, every time you layer a bit of colour, just build, well, just dry it off and then add a little Perfect. bit more. Yeah. I mean, we could start to bring it. Shall we bring a bit of honey pot? Let's change the colour up a little bit. Of course, you could be using as well. So I'm going to pop a bit of honey pot down onto there. Um, but you could take the next colour. So we've got gold. And the gold and honey pot are very kind of similar mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but again it's just uh, we just want to add that little bit of um, dimension so I'm deliberately popping that over there so I can make sure I don't, uh, <laughs> don't in fact I need a better brush Craig look at the state of my brush it's all splayed we don't need that one let's go into this one let's go in there we go and look then we're just going to build up and add that little bit extra yeah and that's all you're going to keep on doing is just layering texture upon texture and although, Debbie, the honeypot is slightly, no, the gold, sorry, is slightly darker than the honeypot, because it's obviously water-based, you can then dilute that yourself and you could match it to oh, yeah. the colour, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let's go in and um, let's just do a little bit of... It's a therapeutic thing to colour. It is, and I, this is when I struggle because I lose the ability to talk when I'm colouring. Yeah, do you no. do the same? Yeah, I, I do exactly the same, yeah. I do, it's transforming, and, isn't it? Because I, I know how you feel as well. I don't want to jump in too much, but then I know what you're like. You're like, oh, I just, I end up just going into that colouring coma when it comes to colouring. Yeah, and it is, uh, uh, do you know, the one thing as well about aqua markers uh, and anything water-based is the forgiving, forgi forgiving nature. Mm -hmm. Is that the right way to use? Yeah. The forgiving nature in the way that you can um, add the colour and build the colour up. You've got, um, what's the right word? Because you're drawing colour out, you can add, you can keep going back in. If you're not happy with something, I could go back in and add that little bit of extra uh, it. to it, which is what I absolutely, I, I mean, I love a wrong colour, Debbie. Put that away. <laughs> You've had your yellow. Put it back in there. You want the gold. I suppose with the water base, the aqua pens as well, you can add and you can take away. With yes. alcohol pens, you can always add. And there is a slight element where you can take away if you go in with a lighter shade, but it's maybe a little bit more, not necessarily difficult, but a little bit more time consuming to do that. Yeah. Whereas with your water base, it's a lot easier to drag it out. Yeah, a lot, lot easier. And of course, with the embossing detail, you don't have to try and find anything. You don't. So you can start to see now how it's starting to really work in terms of uh, building colour, building dimension. So this is why it's entirely up to you. Obviously, this craft along, we're, I'm going to do one of these. Yeah. Um, but if you are wanting to do the decoration, part you absolutely can go in and do this three times I think just for the purposes of the craft along right now I'm just going to concentrate on the one yeah we'll get the bag template together and then you'll be able to see how you pop all of it uh, together in terms of um, you know your design yeah it makes sense yeah that. it does it really absolutely does. so I hope this is a nice relaxing craft along for you for a change it will uh, be. yeah it's lovely to watch as well you know, they're, they're, don't get me wrong, that came out wrong, didn't it? They're all lovely to watch, but, <laughs> you know, sorry to anyone else that does a craft along and to myself, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it is, it's a lovely relax and it's a common one to watch as well as you say, you know, doing it yourself. Yeah, apparently it's very cold outside. My daughter, mm. when I spoke to her, bless her, she was saying how cold it is back home. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, I'm going to have to have eating on here. tonight, I think. She says, I got myself some of that bedding, Craig. Do you know that lovely, soft, super soft bedding? Was it like teddy bedding or something oh, like that? Um, it's from, do you know the Cozy Home? Sorry? Am I, am I, allowed, to, am I allowed to say? What? Cozy Home. Oh, QVC's yeah, own yeah, yeah, brand. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's mine as well. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, did. I oh, mentioned QVC near enough oh, every that's single okay, show. Then. I'm just like, just checking. Am yeah. I okay to mention that? You know what Sarah was like yesterday, a Christmas jumper? It was a Ruth Langsford jumper on the QVC website. I did, I went Christmas and had tree. a look. So, um, um, it didn't yeah. have it on a nice easy pay, that's what I look for. I look okay. for the split pay payments, but it didn't have any on, so oh, uh, did it not? I've kind of passed. Plus, I'm thinking Christmas is nearly over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. But yet, yeah, my bedding, my fleeces, my throws well, are all QVCs. Kobe's home, cozy yeah. home. Yep. I got my bedding from there. And it's like getting into the softest, <gasps> warmest. Lovely, 
I mean, it wasn't so much when I were poorly, let me just tell you. I felt like it were a bit too hot and I thought I, were, I, thought I were burning alive. Uh, <laughs> so it was a little bit too hot when I was feeling the uh, temperature I, I a little suppose, bit. I suppose, yeah. But, uh, oh, oh, oh gosh, I can't wait to tuck into that tonight, let me tell you. Nice and good. For, for me as well, then, this, you'll be like, what are you on about, Craig? But I love that really, really cosy bed in because I like my bedroom really, really cold. Yes. If my bedroom's r really hot, I can't sleep. Yeah. I need my room to be cold, but then I can just snuggle underneath the cosy home. Yeah, it's, just, it's beautiful bedding. And it weren't very expensive, to be fair. No. Well, very, very expensive, was it? So, <laughs> but yeah, like, I know, uh, I know, I know you, I know you know it very well. <laughs> oh yeah! After my few days off, I came back yesterday, and there was a load of QVC parcels just outside there for me. <laughs> You're always doing it, aren't I you? Am. <laughs> I'm like you. I look for the easy pays as well. <laughs> oh, oh dear. dear. So literally, as you can see, and it's it's really starting to take shape now. And this is this is just two colours we've used, which uh, are from both those that gold and that yellow from the um, from the um, from the aqua markers, and then from the two colours from the um, water reactives, which is the lemon tonic and the honey pot. Uh, but you can see, you can really start to build you really can. up your layers. There we go. Um, just to uh, let you know, if you are just joining us once again from Facebook, we do apologise. You know, it did, uh, Facebook is just playing up with the gremlins gone down. So the best place, as we were saying at the start, is, of course, across on our YouTube. I know that's where many people like to watch because nowadays most TVs have the YouTube app, which means you can just watch straight from your large TV. The other option, of course, is across on our website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu, because not only can you watch, you can shop at the same time, which we all love, but I know most of you do prefer YouTube. So if you were watching on Facebook, you can go to either one of those, just give us a search. So we're having gremlins again. We are indeed. Yeah, and, although to be fair, it's, it's not us, I do believe it is Facebook. Yeah, Little not us devils, today. aren't they? Mm -hmm. Always messing with these. They uh... always come out at Christmas, don't yeah, they? Yeah, all the time, always at Christmas. Yeah, or it could be the Naughty Elves, actually. Do you think so? Maybe. Could be. Could, could very well be. Not me, not guilty. Not this time. Maybe dressed as one. I'm a nice elf. Oh. Buddy the elf. And they're the elf on the shelves back, isn't it? Because I know oh, yeah. where... Oh, my goodness me. Tasha's coming up with some beauties. What about you, producer Johnny? But, oh, my days. Some of the stuff she keeps sending me, I'm absolutely uh, uh, howling with laughter. Howling with laughter over the things that she, she, the little elf is getting up to. And uh, little Safi is so into it. She really is. I'm just laughing at Johnny, because Johnny said, and I think this is going to go for most parents as well. It's like, you know, you're, you're lying in bed, you're getting ready to go to sleep at night, and you're thinking, oh, sugar, we forgot to do that. Elf on a shelf. <laughs> 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 oh, you have to get up to do it. Oh, bless mm. you. No, mm. I know, uh, uh, um, Tasha, she, she planned out the whole... 24, well, the yeah. 24 days, everything had it all listed down, and she's going down and one by one. Um, at the minute, he's had um, he's been in the toilet, he's made a bit of a mess <laughs> with chocolate. <laughs> uh, borrowed Safi's underpants, a Spider Man underpants, and stuck them on tree, and he was sat in them. <laughs> wow. Been to London, been to France, now I'm in Sapphire's underpants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that one, that's brilliant. She comes out with some, honestly, she comes out with some beauties. Um, I don't know where she gets them from, Craig. I really don't know where she gets them from, but that seriously, so um, they're absolutely phenomenal. And I, lo I love, and I I've seen her, f I I I yeah, you can have that one, Johnny, because uh, Tash, Tash so when she told me, I'm like, you can't be kidding me. And Sapphire cried with laughter. She thought it was funny, and then she went, can I have my chocolate now? Number five calendar, because it was yesterday, because yesterday, it's six today, isn't it? Is it right, six, five yes, today? Yes, six today. God, I'm getting so confused with days already. Mm -hmm. Now, you can start to see that build-up uh, of colour, um, and I'm going to stop with those two colours. I'm going to bring in a little bit of the blue, so because I've got a little bit of an outer area, I'm not going to worry about this little bit that I've caught. That's not a problem. We're just going to drop a little bit of that blue down, and I'm going to take my, per my brush again. Let me grab my, uh, my rather... Nice coloured tissue. <laughs> Debbie, that looks as though that is a print 
that's come out. That looks absolutely exceptional, the way that you've gone in with the detail on that one. So if it could even be framed, it yeah, really could. Absolutely. And I'm just adding that little bit of blue around the outside and it gives it that little bit of framing and I'm deliberately in it having a little bit darker underneath where the petals would be mm -hmm. but we're not finished because we are going to do some more we're going to add some more to it um, in terms of I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of the um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes quite a few people are coming in now so Debbie worried about me don't drink the water <laughs> Yeah. I think I'm going to drink the water. <laughs> yeah, Christy Mahoney, she's, uh, she's also saying that as well. Big capital letters. Caution, caution, don't drink the water, <laughs> Debbie. Lol. I am a little devil for it, but um, no, no, you know, you don't get harm drinking that, a little bit yeah, of coloured water. Thing. You know, we, you know, we don't advise it. No, we don't you advise do it, do it by accident, not. Like we all do, we all do. Um, we're fine. <laughs> So again, I'm just adding that just around there, and it's just framing uh, me me floral part to this. So again, let's go in, and this is the lovely thing about using one of your finer brushes. Get into all the go. tiny wee bit is yeah the detail, and you can add that extra extra little deeper darker bit round just by going back in and just brushing around the outskirts of where your raised embossed detail is. So see if you're wanting to do exactly what you're doing, Debbie, but maybe you want to then go in and do maybe some of your other folders and that. You could then just carry on, just replicate kind of like what Debbie's been doing, but then you maybe just want to do it with the lily or maybe the peony and you can change the colour as well if yeah, you want to. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to just uh, dry that little bit off as well and then I'm going to bring back in those inks. So let's go back in with... Uh, and I'll bring in my honey pot and the orange on this one because I'm going, to, I'm going to highlight them a little bit more. OK. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a dry. Our Rachel is saying, my cat loves to drink the paint water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagine if the paint got a little me. bit of sparkle in it or something. You imagine, <laughs> eh? I am going to move it out of the way, I promise. I'm going to move it out of the way. <laughs> oh dear. So let's go in. In fact, I think I might just use a bit of uh, honey pot first and I'm just going to go over. So let's bring these in a little bit. Let's bring in the... Yeah, I think I'll use the orange as well, but um, I'm going to drop down some of that colour again. It's nice to see how you can use the aqua pens and your water reactives together yeah, to complement. Yeah. And with the water reactive, you've done a little bit of watercolour with them and now you're doing a bit of blending with them. Yeah, just, it, it just like I said, I could have completely gone straight over. Yeah, you could have, and you? I could have done that in the first instance if I wanted to. Uh, but I'm going to go in, let's add a little bit of honey pot as well. There we go. Yeah, you could just go straight over, like mm -hmm. I did this morning. You know, there's nothing to stop you from doing that. But um, why not? Why, why not, not play with a few? That's the thing, and isn't it? And all it is, is going to touch now. And especially, it's going to give that little bit... Of, can you see how it's already lifted a little bit? You can, yeah. The areas where I want it to, because that's the raised dimension. So I've coloured the main image in, but then just for that little finishing, finishing touch, and I'm using... Um, honey pot now for this one. Okay. It just gives it that little bit of a lift. It now, does. always bear in mind, water reactive react with heat, and I'm very warm. Right. Um, so I can feel that if I keep my hand there for much longer, I'm going to be lifting some of that colour, ah. and I don't want to waste any of that. So I'm just going to hold down a little bit of the um, the uh, uh, embossing folder with right. some tissue over the top. And again, let's just go back in. And look, that's something I always forget about every now and again, Debbie. Yeah, sometimes when I find a little finger yeah. lit, I'm like, oh no. And especially when you spent a bit of time on there. I don't want to, I don't want that to happen. So again, I'm gonna go in and just add that little bit over the top. It's absolutely phenomenal. So there's quite a few people also saying, like Kat's creation shop on YouTube saying looks gorgeous. Can't wait to do this craft along later. I think we'll find that, don't we? You know, there's a mix. Some will do it live. Some like to wait till a wee bit later to come back and then pause and reverse. You've got some that do it live and then come back and do it again. It's a nice mix, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about these crafts. You know, um, somebody shared with me the other day a craft along that I'd done months ago. 
and I was shocked and mm -hmm. I, com I completely forgot about yeah. the project. Um, and I just thought, oh, isn't that lovely? And she said, yeah, she found, found it joyous going back and being able to go back to lots of different craft alongs. True. I'm like, oh my God. Now, can you see that difference that's just made? You can. It's literally just giving it that little lift. Of course, if I wanted to, I could then go in and add a little bit of the um, orange because what it's going to do is just going to lift the areas that are raised. So I've done the colour. The main colour has come from the aquas just by having a play. But then that little touch, that little lift has just been given by literally touching over the tops with the inks. Yeah. And it just instantly, boom, pops mm -hmm, that little bit more and really still focals around that center part there and again you can do your fill bleaching over the top if you wanted to like i did this morning um you can lift a little bit if you, if you find it's a bit too you want it a little bit less less colorful you can always of course um do that splashing technique but you could also lift a little bit of area so you could go in and and, and take some of that color away with your brush if it's a bit too much for you so there's this you've got choices that's the mm -hmm. that's the best thing i can say when you've got um just wondering why i've got yellow on there but i'm going to change that into green now so it'll be fine um, i can see at the corner of my eye on our screen stacy is busy beavering away so we're uh, we'll, we'll come back to her just shortly see see how she's getting in oh, oh she's yeah she's, she's beaming away because she's uh, got it all embossed and oh um, do you want to go and go show go yeah while well, i'm just f fiddling doing these little yeah. bits stacy yeah. can we can we all come to vegas <laughs> oh yes please well, please we would, we, would, oh, we would love that <laughs> well, I, I didn't have a bunch of aqua pins. I have one that I got in a, it wasn't a discovery kit. It was a limited edition. Okay. And so I had limited colors. So I went a little different than Debbie in my color you choices. I'm no Debbie, but <laughs> this is the one I have. I don't know if you guys can see it very oh, well. Oh, look at that. Um, hey, that's beautiful, Stacey. Yeah. That is really nice, picking out the areas that you've uh, gone in and embossed. And look at that embossed. Do you... And you... Honestly, I missed the beginning because I was couldn't get the machine to work. They had the wrong plate combination. Yeah. Um, so I didn't see the exact beginning. Okay. So I'm going to have to go back and start back. from the very beginning too. Uh, but I was able to build up. So my first one was this one. I don't, you can barely see the oh, colors. Yeah. And then my, my last one is this one. Oh, so I, I am that. learning from Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a little <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah. absolutely perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. And then now you know as well the configuration for your uh, folder, your 3D folder. I then do. it means then, you know, you can change the ways that you're doing your layout of colors but these look yeah. absolutely beautiful for uh, what you I had no do. idea I could just use the shim right I okay. always thought it had to be a hard cover and a hard cover the shim I didn't yes. realize could be a cover yeah 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 a lot of people it. get that confusion in terms of um, a, an embossing folder so a standard embossing folder would be the two hard yes. hard plastic shit uh, God, I can't tell myself now. <laughs> <laughs> the clear cutting plates, uh, which are the two hardest ones, and that's for a normal, regular embossing folder. But with 3D, because it's made thicker, we have to submit and we have to take away one of those and bring in another one, which is why we've changed it up to the magnetic and the plastic. Yeah. Because even though those two together, they're still not the same thickness as what the clear cutting plate is, which allows then for the um, 3D embossing to be able to, to work uh, really, really well. Uh, I'll tell you what, Stacey, I'm really impressed, though. I've only coloured one. You've coloured three. Mm -hmm. Well, I had to catch up. <laughs> I know, I'm like, wow, I've only coloured one. I want to have one. a complete project. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's all you'll do. And uh, to be fair, what you could do, I mean, obviously, I'll, I'll, we would do this to match, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just colour it in. And I'll probably just colour it in using, um, using our three. OK. That's all I'll do to yeah. try and speed that process up because I'm, I'm conscious I want to get ahead of yeah. the bag template, which I know what a lot of people are wanting. They are, aren't yeah. they?
But that does, that looks so, so lovely, Stacey. Thank you for showing us. We will uh, drop back to you again later on and see how you're getting on. But loving what you're doing and a lot of love as well for what you've done. Uh, Cat Creation Shop is saying that's beautiful, Stacey. It absolutely is really, really lovely. Um, so I know as Debbie was just saying there a moment ago, she's speeding up. She's I am like, now, yeah, now, now Stacey's put me to shame. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what I'm just going to show you is if the colouring part for you is just a bit too fiddling, you don't like that build up of colour, I personally sometimes think it's worthy. Uh, but you can still get a really nice effect. You can. Um, and that's just one layer. Let's go back in with the uh, um, uh, honey pot, sorry. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go in with honey pot. The only difference that I'm going to have on this one is, is obviously it's not going to be as full colour, but you can still see the you effect you that you get, um, which is still quite nice. It's still a nice one, but it's not as full, uh, a fuller colour effect. But again, I think it depends on what you want to take from this craft along. That's how I always look at it. These craft alongs are for you to learn and do these real-time projects, but sometimes it's just nice. And you're going to see the difference in a second. Yeah, Because yeah. that's just the two colours. And then if I just add a little bit of the orange into there as well, um, and you could use orange, Bordeaux. I think me and L I used Bordeaux this morning with uh, Lily. That looked really quite nice. <laughs> oh, can I, I'm going to read two at the moment because I'm going to read Charlotte's because it's actually really good and it works with what you've just said there, Debbie, saying, I like to watch live so I can learn the techniques. Then when I'm working on the project, I can go back to the videos. So exactly as Debbie was just saying there. <laughs> Kirsty D. <laughs> They're all laughing in the gallery. Saying, I've just been in the kitchen to make a cup of tea. I've ended up peeling and chopping vegetables, but we're having pasta for tea. I blame watching CCTV for me, not concentrating on what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy listening and watching as well. Oh, well, you can either have the vegetables tomorrow or you can have the vegetables tonight and then you can have um, pasta tomorrow. Up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Oh, bless her. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I do it all the time, let me tell you. I do it all the time. I go in to do something, end up coming out doing something completely different, different and then I'm like, what did I actually go in to do? It, ha it ha happens to us all. It happens to us all. It even happens to me. Yeah. Right, because I'm speeding things up, I'm going to show you the difference between the two and then you can make your mind up which way around you want to do it. Uh, no right or wrong way, is there really, Craig? No, there isn't. No, it's like you say. And then even, even if you didn't want to do it the way you showed initially, I mean, look at that, Debbie. That exactly. looks epic. Yeah, and that's very, very speedy, quick. And I, even though I've got, like, I've, I've created a little bit of a, a green here rather than blue, even though I'm using the blue, popping that blue on top of the yellow and orange and red has given me this lovely shade of uh, green, which looks really quite pretty, actually. It does, doesn't so, it? I'm quite happy with to keep it as it is. Um, and that Works is just well. literally... Uh, what was that, Johnny? Kirsty D. So, so she's, put, uh, she's put the vegetables in the slow cooker to make a stew. Oh. So they won't go to waste. Which is good. And she's saying that she was actually looking at a pan of bolognese while she was peeling them all. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's even funnier. If it could be even funnier, that's why. <laughs> Right, so I'm just literally just going round that edge there. But again, so the two there, and if I lay them side by side, but did you see how fast it was to do that mm -hmm. one? Um, but the more fuller colour is because I've got absolutely everything onto there. Um, so I'm just going to do, again, we'll just speed that up. So yeah. we'll do that same process. Let's get that rid of that again. And I'll just go back in with the lemon tonic first. Okay. So back onto lemon tonic. And then I've got my three pieces. So, again, if I was wanting this to all match, then it would have been three of the same way, the same way that you're going to colour. But I think either look... I mean, to be fair, Craig, nice I'm really quite impressed with that. It looks look really beautiful. It looks good, doesn't it? It, it looks makes, really good. It's these folders, they make you look like you're some kind of um, artist. Yeah. And I'm not at all, really. Well, um, let's... Um, now, where... But just while you were doing that, there was a... It wasn't a question, but I thought I would read it out because you might have a little hint or, hint or that yeah. as to um, what... Uh, cat, Cat's Creation Shop is saying, I wish my blending and colouring looked this good. Oh, well, Which but is, it's... It's lovely, uh, but... Yeah, it's, it's easy. 
I've just got a square applicator and I'm taking ink uh, going across the embossed detail. Um, it's the embossed detail that's doing all the hard work. Yeah. I'm not doing any of that hard work. I am literally just taking it across um, and highlighting the areas what have been embossed for me by that beautiful 3D embossing folder. I mean, it couldn't get any easier if it tried. Honestly, I promise you. Obviously, with the colouring aspect, the colouring, you can do that colouring, it's completely different, you get a different look altogether. But I think they look really lovely, do you know, when you, whichever way you go for it. It does. What I've also found, uh, Debbie, if it's uh, any help to Cat's Creation Shop and anyone else, where we say, you know, relax, take your time and enjoy it, do that. What to try and do as well? Try doing something like this, do it quick. Try and do it quick, because sometimes when you try and do it quick and you speed something up, you get a coverage of blending. You didn't initially tend to, but you end up getting a look like this with 3D embossing. Yeah. So it might sound a bit, what you try to say there, try it nice, chilled, slow, but then also try speeding it up. Get that colour on, blend it on, and see how that looks. It sometimes hits the layers um, a little bit harsher than you intended, which will then give you a look like that. So give it a shot and see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to go in and just, again, and this will be all we're going to be doing in terms of the 3D embossing folders because, um, because <laughs> thank goodness Stacey showed me that she'd done three because uh, I would probably would have been still painting by now. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so um, literally this bit is now all completed and all finished and we're going to move on to the bag template in a second. Brilliant. So, and that back template can be used not just with these. I mean, obviously, it's per perfectly sized to work with these folders. Yes. But um, I think all the other different collections that you could use that back template for. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's a beautiful bag, but it's, it's a basis for you to then design yeah. whatever you want to design on it. Exactly. So, again, I've just got the last little bit. Yeah, I'm not colours. going on my flower bit there, am I? No. There we go. Do you know when you debate whether you or not that's part yourself, of the flower? Yeah. I always talk to myself just to think, have I gone on to that bit? Is that part of the flower? I do that with some of our stamps. You know, if it's a lovely, intricate floral, and I'm like, is that a bit of the leaf? Or is that, like, seen through to the back? Or yeah. is it a petal? You know, I sometimes question myself. There we go. Uh, all done. So that's three looks that we've got. And to be fair, not too far off the mark, no, really, not, at not. all. So yeah, so that's us done. So I think we'll pause here just for a second uh, while I tidy up and then we'll move over to the bag template, which please don't be put off. I will go through each one of those step-by-step -step instructions with you. So yeah, that's it. Brilliant. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of a break for anyone that wants to catch up. Maybe you're just going to focus on the one for now and do what Debbie said, do the other two after. Maybe you're just going to do one. But what we will do before we take a little break, let's have a look of our water reactive ink pads. We've got this little bundle here where you're buying four, you're going to get one free. So we have got smoked peril. So these, one, so these ones are, oh no, these ones are water reactive that I've got here. I believe our bundles, our bundle, the pigment ones, yeah. Oh, I don't have the pigment ones. Well, we do have a pigment ink pad bundle, but we also have a water reactive bundle, which is this one here. If you do want pigment ones, have a look across on our website. They are there, shop the day. But we have got our water reactive here. So these ones here is the smoked peril. So you can be doing with these what Debbie's been doing with uh, her craft along. So we've got our smoke pearl within this one here. We've also got straw bale. Another one of the team's favourite is lagoon. We've also got smoked emerald. We've got crushed velvet. And we have got green topaz. So that is the water reactive ink pad deal. So six piece, it works out. You buy five, you get one free. £30.50 or $45.50. Going to say like I have been saying over the last step, well, couple of days, just been back since yesterday. Many of these deals, water reactive ink pads, we sell every colour, no problem at all, day in, day out. We always like to put a little bundle together for you at home. So, saving 15% on that today's price, but if you're platinum, it comes down to 
24 pound 40 or 36.40 this everything else that you've been uh, seen debbie been using earlier on wake up call to with lily and debbie crossing our website crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu and if you're new to us within the last five days or so You'll not know who this guy is, although many of you will do. He's uh, not been taking a break. He's been touring with Sarah. They're on their final week here in the UK of their tour. So if you do want to know a little bit about Ben, sit down, relax, because it's a pretty much a lengthy get to know Ben. Here we are. I'm Ben and I'm one of the presenters on Crafters TV. So my presenting journey started when I was about 18. I started working at a holiday park here in the UK. Our US viewers might not know it, but there's um, like a holiday park called Butlins. So what's involved with being a presenter? Um, well, my day to day kind of is um, ensuring I know everything that's on the show. Um, ensuring that the you know the guys that I'm working with obviously um, are happy with everything that's on the show. And I, I kind of feel like um, what I do, I'm sort of like the, the glue in the show, if you like. There's a bit of a crafty reference for you. So kind of listening to the guys in the gallery, uh, you know, the producer, the director, I'm sort of always um, listening to what they want me to do whilst the crafters are crafting. So I feel like I'm there as the glue, keeping sort of everything, you know, as it should be. Um, but I also think my job is to, is to have a lot of fun, which I think I do on most days, get the viewers interacting, because we always love to hear from our viewers, and I think that's one thing that we do here that you don't get anywhere else is that is that interaction, having people like you know commenting, asking a question, and then straight away we're we're able to react, we're able to answer that question, we're able to you know read out that comment, we're able to join them in singing a rendition of Foam on a Roll. Yes, I help to run the show, I help to inspire, to educate, to entertain, and um, just sort of generally be a good all round. Bloke. So who inspires me? My dad is a big inspiration for me. Um, he's one of my best friends and um, I, I probably speak to him twice a week, but he's um, he's always sort of instilled a, a sort of a good work ethic in me. Um, and his, his big catchphrase is work hard and play hard. And I, I, something that I live by is, um, you know, to put all your effort in when you're at work and, you know, make sure you're doing a good job. But then when you're outside of work, make sure you have time to kind of have fun, spend with your friends, spend with your family. So um, I always remember that. Apart from Crafters TV, what else am I passionate about? Well, obviously I'm passionate about uh, my family. I love to spend time with my family, with my wife, my two children, uh, and my three pets now, because we've got, we've just got another dog recently, a puppy, uh, which is, uh, killing me, I've got no sleep. Also passionate about sport. I think a lot of our viewers know I'm a big rugby fan. Running, I like to do, um, but again, the old knees are beginning to hurt just a bit. I'm getting old. Oh, so many amazing experiences uh, connecting with our viewers. Um, always get sent cards, which is lovely on, on sort of special occasions and birthday cards every year. I always get cards sent through, which is so nice to come in and have you know some cards and um, you can send presents as well if you like. I've never had a present yet, so if anyone wants to send presents you can. Do you know what? I haven't had many presenter fails, particularly here. Actually, here, presenter fails, knocking over pack shots. I'm very bad at doing that. If you stack a pack shot too high, chances are I'm going to get exuberant in my arms and knock it over. My biggest moment of pride or biggest achievement, I've got a few. The, I mean, these are big for me. You'll probably, uh, probably laugh. Um, I, I ran the London Marathon. I was a Guinness World Record holder. I've got the certificate for that up on the wall alongside my marathon photo and alongside my foam and roll caricature. My Guinness World Record was um, for naming the most amount of Beatles songs from their opening lyrics in one minute. I've had things named after me um, over the years. Um, I had an alpaca named after me. If you are ever in Aylesbury, do make sure that you go and drive around the roundabout which is uh, near the Waterside Theatre there, because you'll find that that particular roundabout is named after me. Oh yes, I have a roundabout named after me, big time. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Just didn't rabbit, know. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. And they're saying they couldn't shut them up when they were filming. I can, I can imagine, I can going. imagine. And he was going. <laughs> you see, you wind him up and he keeps going. Um, oh, we're all missing him here. It's nice seeing him dot in and out, but uh, I believe he's back from next week. 
I believe he's back from next week. He'll be knackered. I, we, we did see him briefly yesterday. He, he, popped, he popped in yesterday and I was like, Ben, I went and gave him a cuddle. He went, oh, I've just been to the gym. I was like, it doesn't matter, give us a cuddle. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, nice, uh, it was nice seeing him popping in as well. A <coughs> uh, lot of love for what you've been making, Debbie, and how you've been explaining to it, layer the colours. We've got uh, Kat's Creation Shop is saying, this is why I love you guys. You always give the best advice. Well, hopefully that helps. Charlotte is saying, I find all of the colouring and blending so relaxing. I can go for hours and get lost in it. Trisha is saying, hello everyone, I've been watching on the big TV. Thought I would log on to say hi to my crafty friends. Hi. And we've got Let It Go Ros is saying, hello from Maryland, join in from Facebook since the gremlins have taken over. Join in from Facebook since the gremlins have taken over. Uh, have you gone back in? Are we back up and running, are we? Or, so I think maybe maybe you, you mean that you've gone into YouTube from Facebook, but wherever you are watching. So just to say again, best place to go across for most people is YouTube because you can go on the big screen when it comes to apps. However, you can, and another way that a lot of people do love to watch is on our website because you can watch and shop at the same time. We are in the midst of our craft along. What I am going to do is jump straight back to Debbie because I know this is the part that so many of you have been waiting for, Debbie. So the bag template. Yes. So we'll get on with that. So it's, it's two parts that we're going to do it into. You'll take some multi-purpose cardstock. Um, now, multi-purpose cardstock, we know it A4, A4 form. Apparently, it's back in stock. Did you know? No, I didn't. No, Lily, Lily, the bag out of the cat, wait a minute, the cat out of the bag this yeah. morning. Because I said, oh, is it really? I had absolutely no idea. And I'd not put my order in because I am literally on the threads of next to nothing oh, left to nothing. Down. yeah so i'm definitely going to be getting some of that uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut two pieces out um of multi-purpose cardstock and so the first thing i want to talk about the sizes is one piece is going to be seven and three quarters by eight and a quarter now the the length sorry the width mm -hmm. of a um, a4 is just that little fraction over eight and a quarter so you can just literally turn it onto its side and take a sliver off the side. So I know that that now is eight and a quarter. Got you. This bit is going to be at seven and three quarters. So I know I'm covered at eight and a quarter here, but this is seven and three quarters that we're going to go to. So our piece of cardstock is going to come in at seven and three quarters, which is the notch before the um, number eight. So I'm just going to make sure I've got that lined up properly flush to the top as well because that will affect me cut uh, and it's important that you get these bits right so your measurements are seven and three quarter inches by eight and a quarter it's that easy and i'm just going to double check that because i've just thought on craig did i t that's I'd, do you know when you have this vision that you've just yeah. cut the wrong side i'm like <laughs> oh Right, so yes, so eight and a quarter by seven and three quarters. That's one part. Get another sheet. And this one, it needs to be eight and a quarter again. So I'm going to go in the long edge. Long edge? Short edge? Portrait. 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 And I'm just going to take it to that eight and a quarter. And it literally is the slitherist. And I say a slither. It is, I mean, it? it is a slither. That is all it is. So uh, that's eight and a quarter. This one needs to be 11. So I'll repeat those two measurements to you in a, in a second so that okay. you've got that right. Perfect. So if I just move it out of the way for a second. Let's get all these. This measures 11 inches by eight and a quarter. So that's your first... Well, this is going to be the piece that creates the flap. Got you. This one measures at eight and a quarter by seven and three quarters. So you've got your two pieces. So that's both your measurements sorted. 11 by eight and a quarter, seven and three quarters by eight and a quarter. Real. Okay? So they're the two pieces that we're gonna do. I'm gonna move the large one out of the way because I don't want to, I don't want to give you palpitations when you see what you've got to do with it. <laughs> so um, we're just going to start with this one because I promise you, you're probably thinking, oh my God, what's she doing to us? What's she doing to us? But it, it will become clear in a second. We're going to bring in our scoreboards just for the time being. And this is when you're going to need some scissors as well. Um, are we all right to zoom just a little bit, Charlotte? So that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, because what I want to do is uh, talk to you about the next little pieces that we're going to do. You know, that, that's perfect. Thank you, Johnny. Not, not in. We don't want to get any closer. 
<laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to pop it onto. Let me just make sure I've got the try. Six, seven, yeah, eight, yeah, that's right, yeah. So eight and a quarter is the one that you're going to put uh, running across landscape on your okay. piece, and we're going to put some score lines into place. So I'm going to bring in the scoring tool. And we're going to score at five and three quarters. I don't want you to go all the way down with a score line. So put your cardstock up to the flush of the board. Five and three quarters is the... Um, and if you, if you think about it, five, six, that's your five and a half. The three quarter one is between the halfway mark of your five and a half to your six, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Yeah, thank you. Just, do you know sometimes you want someone just to tell you that it's making sense, Greg? Yeah, you do. You're my, you're my person that's telling me it's making sense. It, everything you've gone over so far. <laughs> and that's why I'm deliberate. And I said to Debbie, these bits, I'm deliberately going to stay quiet because I know you want to make sure you've got the right measurements. But as it is at the moment, Debbie, yeah, absolutely crystal Perfect. clear. Perfect. Um, for the time being, we're just going to put um, another um, score line in in a second. I'm going to come back to this, this section. Just for, I just want you to get that first one in. just want you to turn it just for a fraction onto um, this part, which is the seven and three quarters and I want you to score a line at two inches so we're going to come in at two inches all the way across like so now it's always tad difficult sometimes to see on white mm -hmm. but what you end up with now is you've got a fold like so and then a fold like so now we are going to be cutting away some of this in a second okay. and we're going to put some more in so what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to show you just 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 so you can visibly see it, I'll, I'll do all my burnishes and everything in a second when I've got all the measurements into place. I'm just going to roughly do those for the time being. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors. Now, the beautiful thing about the larger scissors is they've got um, inches on here. Yeah. So I can go in at that two inch mark and I'm just going on that fold line. And I, I should really have put um, a pencil line so you could see it a little bit better. I can just see, yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. All right, is that OK? So you're just going to put a little bit of a cut up to that score line. What we're going to do is we're going to create a little tab here. But I'm not going to do anything just yet. Can, I, not... can I just jump in of just at this point? Only because yep. Rhonda is asking five and three quarters on which side? Perfect. So, so five and three quarters. So, so this is the eight and three quarter measurement. Uh, sorry, eight and a quarter measurement. Yeah. So this is where you're going to put your five and three quarter mark in. So it's on the long edge. We'll call it the long yes, edge. Long, yeah? yeah, long edge. So the, the longest part of your card is the one that's got the five and three quarters. So great question, Rhonda. Thank you for asking. Thanks, Debbie. It was yep. just while we were at that No stage. problem. That's absolutely fine. Uh, right. So the next bit that we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, score lines into place as well over here. Now, this is when, um, and I'm going to, uh, the easiest way I can do this is I'm going to take this fold and I'm just going to push it back in on itself because I want to bring it to this side of the board. You can do this, Craig, it makes it a bit easier where you just fold that, do you know your burnish mm -hmm. line and you take it up to the butt of the board. Yeah. And I'm going to come a little bit close because I want you to see this and it's a tad tricky with the camera angles, so I'm going to try my very hardest to do this. But I want you to put a score line in at an inch. Now, I don't want you going, and if you just look at this line here, sorry, I, I, I'm trying to get the angle. We have my fingers and my thumbs and everything. We are seeing oh, yeah, we are seeing it. You know, yeah, don't worry, that's Debbie. okay. So I, I'm not wanting you to go right to this score line here. I okay. want you to stop about a quarter of an inch, half an inch up, or um, uh, say an inch, yeah. come an inch up. Put yourself a little, maybe make it a little bit easier. I'm going to stop at that mark. <laughs> She says, it's yeah. just a little bit way off, but you can see, you get, you get the gist. You do. So an inch and stop. That's the that second score line, but I don't want you going all the way down. No. So we're going to stop there. What we're going to do then is we're going to pop in at another inch line. So on the two inch line, you're going to come down, but you're going to go all the way down with this one. So you're going to go all the way down to that part. Doesn't matter if you come over because you're chopping away some of this in a second. Okay. But I just want you to get those two score lines into place. So nice, gentle scores. So up to the butt of the board, an inch, a two inch, and that one comes down there. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do then is, and I'm going to make this a little bit easier now, Craig, because I'm going to create that little bit of a flat that I was talking about. So I'm going to take off about... I'm going, to, I'm going to do it with my scissors, roughly about half an inch, but what I'm wanting to do is create a little bit of a tab to right. stick my 
bases together. So I'm going to just literally take it like so. So can you see? This is just a rough, a rough way of showing you how to create it. But can you see now? It's creating the side tab of your fold, uh, your your bag. Mm -hmm. That's going to sit underneath. I'm just going to neaten that up, Craig, because mine eyes under these studio lights it's very it's very strong in here it's not it's, at home we've got more of a, a, a better light but it's very bright in here so can you see now but we've got something just literally needs finishing off and we're going to create a split fold gotcha because i'm going to show you just by bringing this in can you see on the side of the bag it comes and then it splits mm -hmm. and that's what this fold is so if i show you now how i do my little piece just by moving those out we're gonna use my i'm using my black line so going back down i'm gonna come down to that mark again but i'm not gonna lift anything off i'm gonna just move it so that that comes literally i'm holding it into place and score yep. and it's the easiest way to do it i'm gonna go back up to that center piece I'm not I'm in that track I'm not moving anywhere and I'm just tilting it I'm just going to tuck this flap underneath so I can show you what I mean again I've just twisted it and moved it slightly and I'm using that black line again so there's no trickery involved no, or anything no. but it's just the easiest way to do it I don't know if you can see them score lines you now can, yeah 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 Perfect. absolutely so that's one part of your bag done that's would you believe end. That's as easy as that. And just so, to say, Rhonda's saying, oh, it makes the gusset, it all makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm just literally giving a little bit of a trim there because when you look at this, this is going to be the inside. So, if I just show you, that bit's going to tuck underneath and it's going to sit like so. However, we've got to manipulate this. So, we're going to fold that in on itself. This is when you're going to get your score tool. Um, I probably would say your smallest, what, you know, your smallest, smaller score tool would be better yeah. for this. Uh, because you can get into those little nooks and crannies a little bit easier. But I'm just going to tease it with my fingernails. So I'm going to tease it into its position so that you can see now... Look at that. You're starting to form that little piece that goes inside and that'll tuck inside as well. So I'm going to put that back on its inside. It's all about manipulation it isn't is, it? you isn't can't it? stock into place because that is what's going to create now that inside fold when your pieces are together, when it's all stuck down, but that is half of your box done. And that is literally as easy as it as it is, or as hard as it's going to get. Um, I've started with this one on a purpose, so I'm going to let you have just a couple of seconds to catch Absolute, up. Yeah. So you know where where you are with that. And if you need anything repeating. Please just reach out, Craig, and let me know, won't yeah. you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Exactly as Debbie just said there. What we will do is let's uh, jump across to Stacey. We'll go all the way to Las Vegas and see how Stacey's getting on. How are you getting on, Stacey? Good. I'm good. I'm, I'm with her. I just did my thing. I didn't notice if she folded the last one, her last uh, score lines, though. Did she fold them in? Yes. I so, believe she did. Yeah. So when you're okay. looking at it, Stacey, you, you're wanting to remember that this is like the, in, the side panel of your box. So you're going to put like a, a, a valley, mm -hmm. a valley fold, valley. so okay. it goes in. So that side panel is going to come in on itself. So you're just going to fold it in. And the same with the tabs. If you oh, look yeah. at that, I don't know if you can... Yeah, that's it. There yeah. you go. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Not bad. Perfect, isn't it? So, so good. Seeing how it all comes together, we will let you carry on, Stacey, and then we'll come back again to you just really, really shortly. You know, and then just to say, certainly from me watching from this end, no questions, no comments on uh, the actual measurements and that, but just to say, you know, exactly 100% feel what Debbie's feeling. Sometimes when you're doing the measurement, you want to make sure you're crystal clear, and you just kind of like to have that confirmation that it is crystal clear and it, it really really is and it's one that I'm going to be doing now that you know how to create that kind of like gusset within the side you can manipulate the measurements then can't you Debbie and yep. you can do different ones yep. which is a fab one and yeah 
as it is, no questions, no queries, no nothing whatsoever. So I think everyone else is getting on OK. So I think um, either we can take another few moments, Debbie, or if it's you're up ready. To you. I've got, uh, we've got the, the second part, if you want to do the second part. Let's do it. Just because there's a little bit more to this one. Let's do it. Um, so move that one to one side. We'll, we'll stick it all together in a second. Moving back to that piece that measures 11 yeah. by 8 and a quarter. So in terms of when you're scoring, you're going to pop it on to and I'll just move this out of the way so you can see. We're going to pop it onto our scoreboard um, full length. So what we're going to do now is it's going to go exactly the same way up to the plus part, uh, flat side of the... Oh, flat side of the board. <laughs> what is wrong with my words? L the longer flush. side, the flush. Flush up to the side of the board. The butt of the board. But the board. The butt of the board, yes. So this next measurement should be straightforward. However, <laughs> As with anything, um, I use my scoreboard as a little bit of a tool. So I'm wanting to measure um, a two, seven, two and seven eighths and two and seven eighths. However, that sounds really complicated, but I promise you it's not. I'm going to use my scoreboard. I'm going to bring this down here. And I'm going to pop myself a little uh, two and seven eighths. Now, this is easy when you're using it on the inch side. Because okay. you've got an eighth of an increment. So between the two and the three, you've got these eighth inch increments mm -hmm. and we're wanting at two and seven eighths so it's really pretty straightforward it is actually. because you're going to go in at two and seven eighths which is the one before three and i'm just popping a little bit of a mark just on the top we're not going to do anything else other than that and the same would be and when you turn when you're thinking about the measurement wise if you're thinking about two and seven eighths and two and seven eighths it is literally and i this is how i look at it it's the six Minus the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In my head, yeah. that's how I look at it. Um, so because it's three and three, which is six, but you've got two of those increments missing. Mm -hmm. So I know that the next two is the two down from the number six, and I know that that's two and seven eighths and two and seven eighths. Great way to think and of that. The way I'd look at it is if I took it up to the end of the board, it's exactly the same. Yeah, so that's that. In my, I have to work these things out in my head because yeah. uh, I don't know about you, Craig, but. Um, Maths is not a strong point. No. Oh, no. Trying to add is not a strong point. No. So I have to do something a bit more clear for me. Uh, so in terms of that now, I'm wanting you to use that, la that last mark as a score line. So on the five and uh, six eights, because that's exactly what that is, you're going to put a score line running from the top all the way down to the bottom. Good. And I'm just going to put that again. I say a gentle score line, but we're going to come in and then you're just going to give that a little burnish so that you've got that perfectly on there. I'm not taking these marks off because I'm going to be using those. Well, that one in particular, not this so much this one, okay. but I'm going to be using that in a moment. So we're going to now just, we'll come back to this bit again in a second, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn it onto this side. Mm -hmm. So this is when you're going to actually put some more score lines in and we're going to go in at two inch again. So let's go in at two. And top to bottom, all the way across. Because if you think about it, that's your panel again, the bottom yeah. part of the box. So you've got two inches, and then we've got a five and three quarters. So again, you could, if you want, just take it up to that edge and then do your five and three quarters. However, two and five and three quarters is seven and three quarters. So I know if I go in seven and three quarters, I'm absolutely fine to go yeah. across all the way from the top to the bottom. Now, this one is what I call a quarter of an inch. So, in terms of your board, it's two, seven and three quarters, and eight. So, you're going to put your measurement mark at eight, like so. And you're probably thinking, well, that's very thin, but it is only a thin top. So that's what that, that little Debbie. mark is, yeah. So oh, this is when I would say, when you're putting your score marks in, make sure you've got those nice gentle scores, a couple, you know, a couple in there, so that you've got a good base to work from. And then I'm just gonna pop the folds in and get those burnished lines into place. And that's on both of those. So this, like, because it is thin, you have to manipulate it a little bit. So it's just that manipulation into its spot because it's forming like a little bit of a, um, a shelf at the top mm -hmm. of your card, top of your bag, like so. So you can see 
and you're just manipulating it yeah. into its form. Can you see there? Perfect. You can. Um, so now what you've got is the oh have I got that right? That's it. That, <laughs> I think of that. Have I got it the wrong way around again? Uh, you've got your basis of your um, fold at the bottom, the space where your embossing fold is going to go, and your flap. It'll become more clear in a second. What we're going to do though is we're going to get rid completely of the hole. And when I say the hole, I'm just going to put a little pencil mark in. We're going to get rid of all of this, even that little flat bit. So we're going to take a scissors. We're going to go on that first score line. Okay. And we're going to remove the entirety of that corner. Right, yeah. <coughs> you can see what's going so to be the So it's come hole. all the way. Excuse me. Oh, carry on. <coughs> We've got a bit of a th tickle again. Tickle. A dreaded tickle. So I'm just going to neaten that up a little bit. There we go. Perfect. And then you can see that I've removed that part. Again, this bottom bit, we need to create that little flap for the base. So I'm going to go up to that first score line again. Pretty much what we did before. Yeah. So I'm just going to chop away about, I believe about myself, about half an inch. So I'm just going to chop away that. Um, and then you can see it now starting to form together. Um, I'm needing to create a little bit of a flap as well. However, this is when you're going to come back and now you can either use a ruler for this part but I want, to, if you think about this piece here, it actually measures in at three inches so I want the halfway mark. So I'm just going to take a little ruler and I'm just going to mark at one and a half inches both sides so, because I'm going to show you what you're going to do next. So that measures three, score a little pencil mark at one and a half either end because what we're going to do now is we're going to cut away and if I just show you the bit that we're going to cut away, you're going to take it from that angle to there. Right. And this bit's going to be cut away. So I'm just going to pencil mark that so you can visibly see it. And if I do it darker, you'll be able to see. And we're not going to attempt to do this bit with... We're not going to attempt to do this bit with um, any scissors whatsoever because I want a nice, neat finish. Okay. But can you see, I'm going to bring in my guillotine. See, before you go on to, on to that bit, we've got a question from Rhonda saying, marking at yep. two and seven eighths and scoring at, and just put a load of question marks. Right, hang on a minute, repeat that to me again. So, marking at two, two and, and seven, seven eighths, eighths yep. and scoring at... The five and six uh, eighths, five and six eighths, yeah. Perfect. And that's the score line that goes all the way down there, yeah. Perfect. Because that's two and seven eighths. And that's two and seven eighths. Yeah. So that's the bit that you're going to score. Good luck. I hope that's helped, Rhonda. Um, now, these parts, like I said, I'm going to bring in my little guillotine. I'm going to chop away those little pieces. And again, I'm just going to take care, uh, pop it on the edge of the blade, like so, using that pencil mark as a guide. Pop that down. And any visible pencil lines that you can still see on there, you can just take off. But what I've done yeah. is created the flap. So that's the flap that comes over. This is the side panel, this is the bottom. But we've got to put again, do you remember the markings in? in? The center, and the yeah. little piece that goes in here. So it's pretty much the same as what the other was. Good so if on. I just bring this in, back into my scoreboard, I'm going to, again, make life easy for myself. So I'm going to push that score line up to the butt of the board and then we're going to put that score line in again at that inch mark. Remember what I said, have yourself a little, and if you want to do it precisely, mark it off on a ruler, maybe a, a, an inch up. I'm just going to, again, just randomly just pop a little mark on there. I just need a visual. I don't really need precision no. in this respect, but I'm going to go in for that inch and I'm going to stop at that mark and then I'm going to go in at that two inch and I'm going to go all the way down, like we did before, all the way down, top to bottom. Try not to move your cardstock, Debbie. And make sure you've got it held into place. Two inch mark, all the way down, top to bottom. And then what we're going to do is exactly the same. I'm going to trim, let's just get that pushed over like so. I'm going to trim that top corner part. Mm, and then so I'm going to trim away the bottom corner and then just take it up like so. And then we're going to put in again 
those little um what do, what did we call it earlier i don't know what i called it yeah is it, is it, um, is it like angles or yeah an angled score line so i'm holding my tool down into the grid i'm going to slide to that corner piece and i'm going to take it down and then I'm going to do exactly the same, spin it round, holding it into that grid. I'm going to lift up that little flap so I can see where I'm going. So just angle that there so it comes onto that black line. This is why we always say, as craft experts, you'll, all, you'll hear us all talk about it, but we all put it in there because when you've got angles like that it to create, helps, doesn't it? it makes life so much easier. And then I'm just going to take away that pencil mark. And what we've got again is our flap that comes in. So think about it coming in. Mm -hmm. And again, just take it down to that angled part, position the angle, to like tease that angle into place, tuck in that little flap, tuck that flap back. And then we've got the piece now that will all form together yeah, to create together. our piece. Now, literally, what you're going to do is we're going to push all of these pieces together and join them all together. Right. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes because yeah. you'll end up with your two pieces. Um, and again, because what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the pieces together and then bring all of that in so that it creates and forms mm -hmm. that template. And if I just show you, this is how it will all form yeah, together. It comes together. Yeah, and that and that is as easy as that bag template Perfect. is. Perfect. Yes. I, I do have a question. Now, I'm not going to answer for Debbie. I, I will throw it across. I know it might be difficult because she's gone beyond this step and cut bits away, but Wolf dark eyes moon water is asking could you please use the pencil to mark where each score mark is so we could see it better now i know that you did ask that question after debbie had started to chop away so i know it's not really feasible um to put the marks in because you've already chopped them away i've got marie's bag templates um here in front of me okay doc and if i pop that down there i'm not sure how clear that is for you okay we go in close that's all the measurements everything that I've talked about in terms of sizes that you need score lines that you're going to pop in so you can see the dotted bits that's your scores yeah the solids all your solid pieces all the measurements are on there I don't know if it's clear enough but you perhaps could take a little screenshot well, that's it yeah you yeah. could do even um yeah, and take a screenshot and we'll hold it there just for a couple of seconds so you've got time to do that if you want to sounds good um and it, again then it is all about joining the pieces together yeah. but what you've got are all the measurements that's your two sizes 11 by eight and a quarter seven and three quarters by eight and a quarter and then you've got all the measurements running along the side so two inches you're scoring across five and three quarters is that measurement of that front panel mm -hmm. the same with coming down here five and three quarters again coming down dotted and then all the score lines are in yeah. place with all the extra measurements so I hope that's helped and I hope yeah. that you know because we've left it there long enough for you that's to get a it. screenshot uh, but that was our the lovely bag template that our lovely Marie Jones if you're watching look Thank you very much because the people responded in the droves how wild they went for her lovely original design mm -hmm. um, and literally just taking inspiration from that that's exactly what we've done for this craft along because Brilliant. you guys asked for it and that's what we've done well that's so, it and then yeah. Stephanie, is, Stephanie is saying I'll be saving the craft along for sure we've got Mary saying Debbie's tip on rotating the paper to get those marks from the side is brilliant it really really is uh, We've, uh, Rachel is saying that's exactly what they were wanting, so that was a big help. They were the measurements. Wolf, Deek, Wolf Dark Eyes, Moor Water, in big capital, saying perfect, thank you. Uh, Colette is saying that's really helpful, taking a screenshot. And Samantha is saying thanks for the diagram, Debbie, so perfect. All good. So we'll still give you another few moments or two for you to then uh, just get up to that last step that Debbie was showing you there. But if you do want to get a hold of this deal, so then you can be carrying on and doing the craft along with Debbie uh, at a later date when they arrive, we have then got our 3D macro folder, embossed folder collection. What I do want to remind you is within this bundle you are going to be getting your 12 pack of your primary aqua pens now these ones alone are worth 22 pound 22 pound or 32 dollars today's price for not only just your 12 primary aqua pens but you've got your three macro floral 
embossing folders, which are really full of depth with that 3D technology. All of that, you're going to be £26 or $35. But if you're platinum, that's then going to come down to £20.80 or it's going to come down to $28 for you guys stateside. All across on our website, go to the shop today. That's the best place to go, of course. If you are watching, you can be shopping at the exact same time. And what I would suggest, probably after Debbie's finished the craft along, you can go back, you can have a look at that 12 days of craftmas. Click on uh, well that link, there's a bobble that says up to 50% off. We'll go over that again. If not at the end of this show, then in launch party, but it's all there. Have a look, scroll down, loads of items up to 50% off pounds, dollars and euros as well. So all seems good. No other questions of that. Everyone's ready to go, Debbie. So I'll throw over back to you. Yep, so we're just going to join the panels together. So it literally is simply just joining them up. I've already just popped some uh, red liner tape onto there. You can choose your um, tape of choice, glue of choice, um, whichever way you want to uh, use this um, in terms of, of sticking it down. But I'm going to use... Um, I, I'm going to use red liner it's one of my favorites and I do I do like red liner tape it gives me strength and stability especially when you're using something mm -hmm. like um, for a bag a gift bag so we're just joining those two together so that little small tab that we cut has gone onto that straight edge and then once you're happy with where that is it sits onto there the tab themselves they're going to fold in on themselves and um, this is going to be like a sturdy bottom what we're going to finish with so okay. I'm just going to lift those up in fact, you know what, let's join... Yeah, I think I'll join those two pieces together first. So I'm going to join the two pieces. So I'm just going to, not flatten, but I'm going to take off this part here. And this one, literally, is going to join up to the edge of this straight edge. Right. And that's how you would join your bag together. So again, I'm just going to line that up. You can make life easy for yourself. You could use a wet glue. Um, you've got wiggle time to get it into place because the only problem, and I said the problem, it's not a problem because it's super, super strong, um, but it's quite strong in terms of if you've made a mistake, um, it's difficult to pull back. Right. Is that the right word to use, yeah, Craig? It is, pull yeah. back. Um, so I'm happy with where that is. So I'm just going to push that down. And then these little flaps took in. And you're going to pop on now the bottom and the top. And that's how it seals that in. So literally, I'm just going to trim because I've noticed I've not quite followed that score line. So I'm just going to trim off that very end. Just makes a difference when you're folding it in. Um, but if I just flatten those two pieces and then I'm going to literally pop that together. That's a good tip as well, actually just flatten it while yeah. you're taking the backings well, off. Yeah, just while you take, yeah, rather than messing about and having to get yourself in a bit of a pickle, because it can happen. Um, and then you're just folding it in. And again, I'm just going to, let me, um, yeah, I took it in. There we go. It's seen it come to life at this stage, isn't oh, it? it? Is, as yeah. you're lining it up. Get your red liner tape. I love red liner tape, but do you know the backing bit <laughs> drives me mad, does it you? Oh yeah. Oh, and they tell me about, oh, use your use your um use your T tissue, it stops it from going. It doesn't everywhere. work for me, Debbie. It work for me. I've not found anything that I, works. Do you know what I thought? I'm thinking, well, it works for Debbie Fisher. Why don't it work for me? I'm going to ask no. her a trick. I'm going to, I'm going to ask her to show me on uh, on Friday because I'm working with her on Friday, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, but yeah, I was like, don't work for me, Craig. Nothing for does. Some strange reason, I just can't get it to work. And then we're going to just literally now pop the glue onto the bottom. Probably going to use, um, I'll use all purpose for this. So, and it just gives it that nice strength on the bottom and that's the thing yeah with the all purpose it gives you that extra stability yeah, doesn't it absolutely uh, and again just pushing that in and this is how if i can just get charlotte to do from the front angle that's your bag whoops a bit close there sorry charlotte i'll just let you do you want me to adjust there you go. <laughs> but that is uh, how you form your bag templates together. Dude, and that's I mean, awesome. it, that a lot easy, it's a lot easier than it looks. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that just sit and dry because we're going to use, because obviously we've got to decorate it. Now, I know we're running out of time, and I did say to Johnny, <laughs> I said this might be the trickier bit, but we'll, we'll try and get through as much as we can. we will. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Oh, bless his little heart. He's so sweet, isn't he? Yes, he is. I love he? him. Uh, I'm going to bring in my black matte cardstock that I've talked about. Um, and 
don't know about you, Craig, but do you always cut mats and layers or do you sometimes wing it, mat and layer? Or are you a, are you a precise mat and layer man? Oh, there's a lot of things in crafting I'll sometimes wing. I will not wing my mat and layer, <laughs> Debbie Robinson. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Wash your mouth out. I've already had Liam earlier on talking about a Scottish, and I'm going to be careful here, squared sausage that I brought your back. Your squared sausage. And he said, is that just the same then, what you get at McDonald's? Oh, oh. oh, and now you've just said there, Debbie, do I wing my mat and layers? <gasps> oh, what a day. Um, well, I, d I do sometimes wing mine, so I'll put it on and then I'll, and then I'll cut it. Yeah. And I'm thinking, could I get two? I could definitely get two onto one sheet there, couldn't I? You could. So I, I think I might wing it. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to have a wing it moment. I think that's what I'm going to do, Craig. Mm -hmm. Look at your face. I can see it's going against all these... Because normally I am like you. Uh, no. Actually, I, I, not to contradict myself, but I've just realised actually what you meant. So, do you place it on and then take your card to the guillotine and yeah. cut slip? Yes, I do do that. Ah, that's I thought okay. you meant, do you just stick it on and maybe go in with your scissors or something oh my like God, that? No. 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 no Never. That I don't. So, yes, to correct myself, yes, I do what you're away to do. Yeah. I'll use my guillotine to then do the other two edges that I do do. That's OK, then. That's... <laughs> Those two in there, then, did you hear them? Immature. I know, what are they like? Mm. So I'm going to just pop those two on. I'm not going to put the third one on because the third one, if you remember me telling you, is not going to be a full piece. No. It's going to be the chopped in piece. So I'm going to take my guillotine now. Now, if you don't like doing this method, then what I would say is, is that you know that you've cut to a quarter, five and a quarter. So you could cut to five and a half if you want to do. Um, but I like just to sometimes take my guillotine and just simply cut and that works absolutely fine it does doesn't it yeah <laughs> yeah so but yeah so if you want to be more precise and you want to do it in a proper manner uh, then of course um what i would say is is uh, measure it at five and a half inch black square uh, and pop that onto there and it should fit on your um should fit onto your panels absolutely perfectly mm -hmm. because if you think about it this is five and three quarters so you get away with it look at that yeah and that's going to go onto the back so we'll pop that one onto the back I have to laugh. Rachel, there. I never measure mine. <laughs> Hang my head in shame. <laughs> no, I, I'll be totally honest. Um, I think it depends on my mood. Yeah. Um, if I'm feeling where I can get away with it, then I'll just go straight in and do mm -hmm. it myself. What I will do quite a lot as well as, you know, we all know a lot of us do the same, Debbie, you know, I have my mat and layer a quarter of an inch bigger. Say I wanted my black outline, my mat and layer, to be a really, really thin, what I will do is I'll maybe measure that black cardstock to say five and a quarter, stick my mat and layer on top and then I'll trim slithers away till I get a really fine mat and layer. So yeah, those sort of things, yes, I do do. Yeah. Oh, do you know? Do you know what are they like, those two in that gallery today? <laughs> oh, they do tickle me. Oh, me too, <laughs> me too. So you can see now we've got the back and we've got the front um, and then obviously this panel now when you think about it in terms of the size we know it's five and three quarters mm -hmm. in the terms of we the measurement we know it's three inches so if I showed you what I mean by that I'm going to bring in a piece of cardstock that measures at three inches by five and three quarters. Excuse me, I'm going to have to take a quick swig. I won't be a minute. Yeah, no, you go oh, for I'm it. I'm literally running out Yeah, now. you go for it. I have to, I have to say, um, Anela, Anelia, apology, pronounced that wrong, just put, hi, Craig, just switched on, and my five-year-old said, you look like a handsome prince. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Charlotte! <laughs> dare you! <laughs> <coughs> oh. Oh, that did tickle me. That did tickle me, Craig. She did, didn't she? She's quick today, Charlotte. It's not she just? <laughs> she just blessed not her. Not often she's like that. But... <laughs> right, so I 
I've cut my panel down to five and a quarter, uh, sorry, five and a half by uh, two and three quarters because I know that that panel measures at five and three quarters by mm -hmm. three. So I've just gone down that half an inch and I think I should, I think, I've, yeah, I've probably got away with that. Now then you're probably thinking, well, how then do you do? Well, it's exactly the same. That's what I'm you thinking. Just, yeah, you just mark the halfway mark. So again, I'll go into that halfway mark. Let me bring in, what about my ruler? There we go. Let's bring in my ruler. And I'm going to just measure that in. Now, that measures in at... Oh, I believe we've got a question from Stacey. So I think just in a moment, we will jump to Stacey in a second. Here we go. We're jumping all the way to Las Vegas. Hi, Stacey. You need any help with anything? Hi. Yeah, I got just a little behind. I need all the uh, dimensions for the mats. The mat and layer measurements. So the mat and layers, uh, the, yeah. I personally, I've just winged my last two for this, but you don't need to because you know that you measured this at five and a quarter yes. when we first started. So you could do your black mat and layers, two of them, at five and a half mm -hmm. inch squares uh, and mat that on. And you know it will fit into that bag because that bag... Um, sizing is five and three quarter yes. inches. So, you, so five and a half inch times two, five and a half by five and a half times the two. The top mat is slightly differently, and I'm just, I'm literally now just working out uh, the ter the terms of the sizing of the mat. Um, I've gone down to, did I say five and a? I think I said the same, didn't I? I five, five and a half five by and a half. two and three quarters, uh, and I'm just putting a little halfway mark in on this point because we're going to create a little bit of a thank you we're going to create that little bit of a mat so i'm going to use my um template there as that little where to start so this bit for me i can't i can't give you the measurements not accurately enough i tend to mm -hmm. just pop on a couple of pencil marks and take it from that corner and if i think about it in terms of size it's yeah, uh, an inch and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk an inch and a quarter coming down here. And again, I'm just going to literally take it onto the guillotine. And I can always tweak this if I need to just tweak it slightly. Let's just go on there. So that it'll fit on perfectly. Look at that. So that... that if I just hold that there, you can see now that fits perfectly onto there. Okay. So, ooh, how many? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, well, you know, we should be okay. I think we'll be okay. Let's just, um, yeah, let's just give that a little... Can I just say, oh, please, do, please don't Did panic, but it's going to take just that few minutes more or that. We will stay with Debbie just to see how we're doing this. Yep, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, just going to go in. Yeah, I'm just gonna just take a little fraction off there. When I looked at my little point, I realised it wasn't quite the centre, but I think I might be able to get away with that one. Johnny and Charlotte don't know that we're going to stay and stick. Do they not know? Oh, they got finger on the button I'm to uh, that, yeah. chop me off. They've got the finger on the button, haven't they? Charlotte's got the power, has she? Is she going to chop us off at the last minute? Bless her. No, she won't so... do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so that's all I've done with that. And then it's a case of, now, if you're wanting to think about in terms of matching, where you're going to pop this. So if I know that I'm going to use this over the top, I'm going to use that as a template. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to just draw on now. And I'm just going to use this. This is literally a little bit of speed crafting now. But I'm going to use that top part that will sit over there and I'm just going to come down a little fraction. Now, I want to chop it all off because I'm going to make a tag with the rest, so... Debbie, that is so... Sad. I never thought that's how you were going to do that angle. Really? I, I thought you were going to go in with your ruler and pencil and never thought about just laying it on the top and then just... Yeah, and then slithers. we're just going to trim it. So yeah. we're going to sit it into there, and we're just going to trim it. And I'm just, can you see? I'm just going to take a fraction off the top. Yeah, and that's that's the best way I could describe it. It's a bit. I'm saying tricky. It's not tricky at all, really. No, but no. it's just about thinking about your angles. There we go. Just a little tad more off. I'm always. I always go on the side of caution with this last bit because I don't want to chop too much off. I think our. I think our blade on our guillotine is. Um, I mean, we do use it a lot, but I've got a feeling our blade needs a little bit of attention. There you go. That's how it fits Look at that. Yeah. And then we're just going to attach that to the top part of there. And then you've got your ribbon, and your ribbon... Uh, I mean, 
I've, I've left my thin ribbon at home, Craig, so oh, I've only got no. the studio one, and it's not really the right colour. Is it not? No, and I'm looking, thinking, what would work? Green would work. That would go that well. That green would work, wouldn't it? The yeah. Is that grey at the back? Yeah. That's, is that organza? Grey what? Grey one? The gr yeah. Is it the grey? Grey or green? 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 Yeah. Whichever colour Whatever. ribbon you want to use, yeah. So, again, let's just... I'm going to stick these two pieces together first. So I'm going to pop those on. Good luck. The way that you've just done that fold flap there, I, I never, as I said a minute ago, I never thought that's how you were going to do it. So Pressure. simple. So simple. Effective. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's... I mean, I know people will be like, ooh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and do it that way, but... You know, there's no harm. No. Give it a go. Give it a go. And if you if you really do have trouble with mats and layers, what you could do that Rhonda said, which is absolutely right, it's what you find easiest doing, you can always add a full mat and layer using a ruler and a marker. I uh, love using the Spectrum Noir metallic markers for doing that. Yeah. So you can do it with your black tri-blend or classic if you wanted to. Yeah. But what Debbie's just shown you there really is very straightforward. Yeah, now if you're going to use a very thin ribbon, you can actually attach some red liner tape onto that little flap and pop your glue onto there because you, you, want, you want to be able to have it attached somewhere. You could actually put um, a, a paper handle on. If you want to put oh, a paper could, handle yeah. on, you could put that on as well. And then to enclose it, I'm going to show you the, what, what I did to enclose uh, on this one, is magnets. Um, but you can use, um, now then, we don't call it Velcro dots, do we? Yeah, what do we call it? Hook and hook loop. Hook and loop. Hook and loop, yeah. Hook, hook, hook and loop. I think we can say Velcro, can't we? Can we say Velcro that? Velcro dot, yeah. Yeah. So, well. We've said QVC so many times as it is within the space of like two minutes, so I think we'll get away with doing <laughs> Velcro dots. So you want, if you are, then you would, and that's how you get that matching where it matches the design. Yeah. Can you see how it comes brilliant. down and it cuts there? So let me just bring in the one um, which has started it all off because I am conscious of, of the time. Um, I've added a with love to this one, a little bit of, you know what I'm like with butterflies, um, some gems. You could use um, glossy highlights. You could, yeah. And just drop some down there. You could spray it with some uh, glitz, glitzy Good stuff idea. as well. Uh, this is a, this was a, um, magnets popped under the flap mm -hmm. and if yeah. i just open it up so you can see it on the inside uh, let's just angle that there oh Ooh, look there there you go and that just and it's on the inside so that when the claps when it goes over it draws it to the can you see Ooh, i love, that, I love that satisfied yeah that satisfying sound so you just literally match that up um I'm going to be totally honest with you, to keep it nice and simple for you, if the first time you've done it and you've not used magnets before, use hook and loop. Mm -hmm. And just pop a little tab onto there and then just match it and it'll sit there. But obviously the magnets keeps it neater, so it, it does, looks neater. It? Um, and then the grow grain ribbon that we've used on this, it goes and fits around. And then the tag, it's exactly the same, just cut yourself a tag. Do you know what I was thinking? Afterwards, mm -hmm. I should have used a punch tag. Because we've got a punch tag, That's, haven't we? Yeah, we do, yeah. don't we? So I should have used a punch tag on that, and that would have made life so much easier. And that was just taking a fraction of what I've got left to create the tag. Mm -hmm. So I hope whew, Debbie, that you've enjoyed brilliant. the craft along. And we nearly got there. No, but we, Not quite, we but we nearly got there. Yeah. Uh, we just didn't get to the magnets, the hook and loop and the, uh, and the ribbon. But I think, uh, well, I hope... You've enjoyed the craft Absolutely. a lot, and I hope you've taken those screenshots because this bag template will work on so many things. And I want you to go and send our lovely Marie Jones a lot of love on Facebook. She's one of our uh, ladies who started yes. on the design team, regularly contributed to the magazine, still does. Um, and now Leanne pinched her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and pinched her to come and work for us. Uh, and she works under Leanne and Bianca and She does a lot uh, of her concepts, doesn't she? Like black and she white. She's the concept and... queen, yes. Yeah. The black and white concepts that you normally see here are from our lovely Marie. So give Marie a lot of love because it was Marie that agreed kindly to let me share that bag because the amount of comments that I got, please do that bag on the craft along, please do that bag. And I'm like, I've got no choice because the people have spoke, so mm -hmm. I've got 
got to do there. And, and thanks to our lovely Marie. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I really do mean it means the world, allowing you to share your beautiful make with us um, and creating uh, for our craft along today. So make sure you go and give her a lot oh, of love. Lovely, Debbie. Really is lovely of you saying that. Uh, right, let's jump across for the last time all the way to <laughs> Viva Las Vegas and say uh, hi and then bye to Stacey. How are you getting on so far? Slow ice. Still have some attaching to do, okay. but as you can see, I'm getting there. Way. So, oh, yeah. beautiful. That beautiful. Is... I loved that. Oh. Brilliant. So would you recommend you. others applying to be on a craft along as well? Yes, and I recommend um, trying going outside your comfort zone because mm -hmm. I have like four or five of these okay. that I got you know, in Lucky Dips or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like the rectangle until Debbie showed me there how it go. fills more space and how yeah. you can saturate the color. Thank you. Oh, so I'll be you're using, welcome. I'll be using it. Brilliant. Aww. Thank you, Stacey. Well, hopefully we'll see you again sometime soon on our craft along. If I don't see you again this side of, uh, well, this year, have a lovely Christmas and New Year. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again, hopefully, <laughs> sometime soon. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, right, Theo, that is this for today. Craig, you absolutely could colour the white ribbon with markers. This is Craig Rancourt. However, I think Charlotte would cut us off if Debbie started <laughs> to do that within this one. But yes, you absolutely could do. Uh, thank you for all your lovely comments. We're going to be back live in, well, just under two hours' time with the official brand new launch. Get it now. It's across on our website. Debbie, thank you so much for You're all of that. You're very welcome. I've enjoyed Brilliant. it. I've loved every minute. Thank you. And, uh, I know in Jordan and Charlotte, we'll all have banter here. But yeah, we will see you live in a couple of hours. Head across to the website and get your heat gun and your heat and mold. See you then. <laughs>